Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Selectmen's Meeting of June 8th, 2015. Uh, we aren't wearing our $1,000 ties this evening because the Selectmen go casual from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And mine are often too tight around my neck anyhow, so. First item of, on the agenda, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just wanted to take an opportunity at tonight's meeting to officially introduce to you the new library director, Andrea Nikolai. She's here tonight uh, to come speak with the board. Uh, most of you have most likely met Andrea in her role as assistant director and then acting director through our two recent interim periods. So we're, we're very excited that Andrea expressed interest in the position. Uh, we're very excited to have her into the position. And we uh, just wanted to, her to have an opportunity to talk to you a little bit and answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Andrea, welcome. Thank, Thank you so you. much for the service you've already provided and clearly the service you will continue to provide. Do you want to give any speeches or anything to us about speeches. reading? Or? <laughs> uh, I would like to acknowledge the, I would like to acknowledge Adam Chapdelaine for being so great and supportive through the whole process and I would also like to acknowledge the town department heads who've also been extremely supportive and wonderful to work with already so far. Um, I really look forward to serving the town in this capacity and um, we're looking forward to a lot of great projects, RFID and summer reading and all kinds of wonderful things to come in the years ahead. I'm delighted with this appointment. So thank you. Thank you. Questions from the board? Uh, Ms. Mond, I see your hand. Yes. Um, then, then first, okay. I want to say thank you to the town manager um, for bringing this hire before us. Um, one of my first jobs was working as a page at the Robbins Library, as well as my daughter, some 20-something years later. Um, and I've been there when we brought in a director from the outside, as well as when we hired from within. And I've definitely seen the benefits in terms of um, hiring from within usually gives a good signal that there's a lot of good things that you're doing. And what we get from you is your expertise um, from having been there since 2012. You know what's running, what's running well, as well as you know what the capacity is and what we can do to grow from there. So I'm, I'm thrilled that um, you're with us. You're an internal candidate, and you're now going to be the director. And I really want to commend the town manager because I know um, he's on top of everything else, spent a lot of time, done a lot of due diligence, and you truly are the best candidate. And look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much, Diane. Mr. Dunn. Uh, it was town meeting that convinced you, right, that you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'm really, thank you, I'm delighted to, I was delighted to have met you in town meeting and talked to you then and, and now. Uh, I, so some of the things that I really liked that uh, Ryan was working on were some of the public outreach stuff that he was doing. He was doing really, like I thought he was doing unusual things that were catching people's eyes and bringing people's attention to the library. And I'm sure there are things that we can learn, or I suspect there are things we can learn and improve from. So I hope that uh, that's some of the things that you're looking at. And I look forward to what you bring to the town. Absolutely, thank you very much. Yep, Mr. Carroll. Oh no, oh no, 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 wait, no, no, the not, not, not done, not done. <laughs> Three to go, Mr. Carroll. <laughs> no, th th thank you very much. I'm also very thrilled by this appointment and um, I'll note that you were one of the lucky departments who did not have any questions, that did not have your budget held at uh, mm. town meeting, which uh, make, means you kind of won the jackpot. Um, <laughs> however, I know that some of the town meeting members did have some questions that you know I directed them over to you and, and I was really, happy with the responses that you uh, you gave to them, the information, and I've been happy with some of your innovations, too. I think at a previous meeting, I mentioned to my colleagues that during our recent town read, I thought it was very innovative to, um, to run a community conversation with the author of the book from the UK via Skype. It worked out really well, and we're looking forward to more innovation like that. Thank you. I was wondering if a word, in a word or two, you could just say kind of where you see the library and kind of the cultural life of the town. Well, I see the library at the heart of the cultural life of the town. I was, when I was reading through the master plan, I noticed that the library is one of the town departments that really embodies the, the town goals almost more so than any other, um, <laughs> I dare to say. Um, <laughs> more than I, the Board of Selectmen? <laughs> oh, no. Well, within reason, I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I, I look forward to growing the, the outreach efforts that Ryan started. Um, we're going to be at the, at the farmer's market again this summer. Um, so fi just finding innovative um, places where Arlingtonians gather and celebrate the town life, uh, we look forward to supporting that and being part of it in the many ways that we can, whether it's through promoting the materials and core services that we already have, or um, inviting people to programs that are new and different. Um, so all of that and more, um, yeah, really looking forward to just continuing to make the library sort of the heart of, of the cultural life of Arlington. 
Thank you. Mr. Byrne? No, thank you very much. Uh, mine was a life that started on Saturday mornings at the Dallin branch going to uh, readings and stuff. I know the Dallin branch is now gone, but uh, uh, the, one of the things I think that's spectacular about you is the fact that we've transitioned through two directors while you've been there, and no one would notice a single change in any of the services. Uh, things just continue smoothly, and that's because of you. So very excited to have you. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, wait, no. <laughs> Uh, on the consent agenda, the minutes of the meeting for May 11, 2015, May 18, 2015, and a request for a contract to drain layers license, Venaria and Sons Site Development, Inc. Anything from the board on either of those issues? Okay, Mr. 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 Chairman, I must pull out the uh, 18th meeting uh, minutes for the 18th as I was not present. Okay. Uh, Mr. Greeley, uh, uh, move approval with just one uh, minor change that I spoke with uh, Maria about beforehand. And under on the day of May 18th, under Citizens Open Forums, uh, Mr. Dunstady is very sympathetic. He rides his bike several times a week and agrees some bikers. And we're changing, uh, cha we're saying several times a week. And um, I don't. The, the language is notices that, that cars sometimes come to a stop even when they don't need to, which is a, just changing that sentence. Mm -hmm. okay. we'll approval with that change. Okay, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. I, may I? Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, there's also a correction with the minutes with respect to the vote. Um, as the board has in front of them, the sidewalk cafe permit policy was not approved. It was received. So we can make that correction. Yes. Thank you. That's May 11th or that was May 18th as May well? 18th. May 18th. May 18th as yes. well? Okay. Anybody else on that? All right. So first what we're going to do is vote on May 18th with the two changes that Mr. Dunn and, and uh, Mr. Heim have just brought up and so that uh, Joe may... Uh, um, Abstain. Uh, abstain, yeah. excuse me. All those are uh, motion to approve, just May 18th, Mr. Dunn, second. Second. Se second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Now the minutes of May 11th, and then the request for the contract to drain layer's license. Approval. Well, approval, is there a second? Second. Is the contractor here? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, next uh, is appointments, the introduction of our newly appointed Arlington Veterans Council Committee member. To do so, we want to bring up Jeff Chunglo, our veterans officer, who did a spectacular job with our Memorial Day observances uh, two Mondays ago, I guess. Well, Jeff. thank you very much, and good evening. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Jeff Melton, uh, our final Veterans Council member that you didn't have the opportunity to meet the other day. So um, I serve with Jeff uh, in the Navy Reserves, so fine, upstanding citizen he is. Also, Jeff teaches at the Audison, so brings a lot to the table, and we are currently conducting our first meeting this evening. So, um, so I'll turn it over to Jeff. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jeff, you teach in the middle school. Yeah. Wife and I moved here uh, a year ago, January, so a year and a half now. Uh, four minute walking commute to school, so I'm very happy with that. Um, teaching uh, primarily eighth grade math support, so students that have underperformed on the standardized testing and stuff like that. It's a, a trickier disciplinary, uh, I guess, demographic. Um, but also, it's, it's really fun to just have something new every day and the different idiosyncrasies of the different kids. Uh, so I'm just looking forward to this being one more outreach and in, in my involvement in Arlington as our family becomes part of the community. And you do you walk to you walk to the west? Um, uh, where do you, what street? You don't have to give an address, but oh, I'm, I'm on uh, Forest Street. Forest, okay, yeah. You're in someone's neighborhood, and I was born on Farmer Road. I went to the east, since we're going to bring up. I place. went to the west, which was the best. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to bring it up. I can't say anything. Yes, Mr. Dunn. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my colleagues have heard the speech before because uh, we, we, I mentioned it when we had the other people uh, for, on the commission. Thank you very much. Really appreciate uh, you volunteering to do this. It's a really important role. It's something that uh, I'm really glad that Jeff has sought to create this committee, and I think that it's going to serve veterans. 
One thing in particular is I mentioned is people of your age demographic. Um, I, I think it's really important that we work to develop the relationship with those veterans as well. Because I look at some of my friends who have come back from Iraq and the struggles that they've had and with other members of their unit. And it's, a, it's something that they fight with all the time, you know, continue, you know, years later, it's still part of them. And uh, I'm really glad that Jeff and you are there to help do that for uh, the veterans who live here in town. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Kuro. Thank you very much. I would just want to e echo Dan's sentiments. And uh, I have two, uh, two children up at the Audison. And uh, I've heard nothing but good feedback about the role that you played in the Audison's uh, Memorial Day observances as well, which uh, is always a very special time uh, up at the school. Um, which uh, I'm sorry I wasn't able to join you, but I heard nothing but uh, great, great reviews about uh, your, your role in front and center there, and I think you serve as a great role model for the students. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Mann. <coughs> and I think <coughs> Mr. Dunn may have already encapsulated it, but <coughs> excuse me, when, at the previous meeting, each of the um, candidates <coughs> sort of expressed an interest as well as we sort of expressed an interest that we were interested in terms of this committee, recognizing you're probably going to do tenfold that. And I'm just going to take advantage of the opportunity having you here. Um, one of the things, and one of the other candidates, and I'm forgetting her name, um, sort of highlighted as sort of one of her ballywicks she wanted to focus on is um, outreach to veterans. Like my dad, Korean War vet, he was uh, born and raised in Cambridge when he went um, in the Army, went to Korean War, had to go before the Brookline Board of Selectmen, got yelled at because he was 10 minutes late. Uh, the train tracks were frozen up. They gave him two packs of cigarettes and sent him off. Um, so he's been an Arlington resident since the late 60s, but technically he's out of Cambridge and Brookline. And sort of getting that niche of, of veterans uh, more so involved. I think a lot of them are already aware of services and things like that, but just getting them involved in the intergenerational um, outreach that's been done. <clears throat> I know they've done it at the high school, and you're probably also... Um, fostering it um, at the middle school, but I think a great resource is, I think a lot of veterans of my dad's age on up, you know, Vietnam, et cetera, were really kind of quiet, um, but now I think they see sort of the benefit of, you know, speaking to the younger generation. So I'm not sure what your niche is, if we've already defined what it is that you'd like to also bring to this committee, um, but I want to take advantage of the opportunity of having you here, and if there's anything else you wanted, sort of. Uh, one of the big things at, at the forefront for me, I, I was born and raised in Alaska, so anything in terms of history was anything that survived the 1964 earthquake. Um, wow. Yeah, so everything here, you know, when I first moved down, it's like, what's that plaque? What's that plaque? And I was like, every house here has that plaque. They're just old. That, that's what they are. Um, so in terms of really, even though I'm a math teacher, I really enjoy history uh, and having all this living history around us. Uh, in that Memorial Day speech, I made reference to the memorial plaque at the high school in the Vietnam uh, Memorial at the high school, not even recognizing until I took my class outside to do a worksheet and we walked right past the memorial for the World War II veterans that had been to Junior High West. And so the fact that I didn't make reference to it there, didn't know it existed, kept asking staff around the school, do you know what it is? Do you know where it is? And just there's no awareness of it. Uh, so one of the projects that Jeff and I have already been discussing is figuring out a way to uh, basically identify all those memorials throughout town, you know, the, the little, you know, squares here and, you know, getting out the information that we've got two Medal of Honor win winners buried in St. Paul Cemetery um, and, and really taking advantage of all the history that Arlington has with its veterans and making that aware uh, within, the, within the town and the community. I like that too. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Riley. And, um, Thank you very much. Um, that, that sounds really interesting, and I, I think that's um, a, a really great um, thing to set out on for this committee, and I, I certainly trust anyone that Jeff vouches for, so um, I look forward to uh, seeing your work, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good job. Take care. Care. And now another appointment. Uh, Light. What? Oh, oh, sorry. Someone has to move. I think oh, we, someone has to move. We approved. actually approved, We've already approved it. We already approved it. Oh, no, we did. Meeting. Remember? He couldn't be with us at the last meeting. Apparently, my reputation proceeded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we let him in without seeing We him. could rescind it, but I don't think so. <laughs> Anybody want to move for reconsideration? <laughs> <laughs> You're set, buddy. Thank, Thank you, you. Take care. You. Uh, and now we want to uh, bring up uh, a lifelong resident of Arlington, Mr. Bill Copperthorne, for appointment to the Public Memorials Committee. 
Welcome, sir. Good evening. How are you, Bill? Nice I'm doing well. You. Happy to be here. Uh, Any particular reason you chose this? Uh, you, you've been a town meeting member. You've been very active in town. We've done a few things. Okay, please. Yeah, I, ju I just saw, I saw the opening, and I, I called my friend Marie to find out a little bit more about it, followed up with a phone call to uh, Dennis Corbett, who was a little bit more enlightening about uh, what goes on there, and uh, Al Salaponte, I know as well. So after speaking to the two of them, I, it sounded you know fairly interesting and something I'd like to get involved in. Thank you very much for that. Questions from the board? Rules approval. Second. Rules approval. Is there a second? Second. So uh, which would you say was the quieter conversation with Marie Kropelka or with Dennis Corbett? Oh, with Marie. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Who knew the most? Never mind. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thanks so much for your willingness to okay. serve. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to it. Uh, licenses and permits, request for change of manager, all alcohol license, not your average Joe's, David Chambers. Is he here? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So we, what? Can yes. We, I, I really wanted the gentleman to be here. Yeah. Um, so can I? Well, why don't we leave it open and if maybe they're coming in late table and uh, otherwise we'll table it. Yeah. And he was supposed to be here. Or do you want to table it just? Oh, no, no. I'm Marie, do you know whether? He was supposed to be here. No. Okay. Unless I'm just wondering if he has trouble with the management so that he could get out early. No, we can That's even meet and see if he comes. You know. Is that all right with everyone? Yep. yep. All right. Yep. Okay. So before we move to uh, item seven and eight, I, I draw your attention to our addendum. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, Mr. Hine had just raised uh, from the May 18th meeting. What we need first to do is to approve these revised sidewalk cafe permit regulations. And you see in the materials before you, the just the uh, highlighted in yellow, the changes uh, that were made. Move approval. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. And we did make sure that uh, both owners were made aware of this, the policy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I had an opportunity to speak to uh, one but not the other uh, before the meeting. Yeah. Uh, so we'll make sure that they're both right. aware of it. None of these changes are substantive changes that would alter the application that they've already submitted. Okay. So um, I believe the permit for the, Madro m the Madrona tree, she's unable to be with us this evening, correct? Oh, she is? Ted Fields is going to speak on her behalf. Oh, Ted is going to speak? Oh, okay, please, Ted. Yes, Mr. Dunn. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Greeley. I just want to, especially because we just didn't have a chance to look at this beforehand, I just want to make really clear that what the changes are that we're talking about. And okay. so, number one, we're talking about the, the board may prorate its fee for applicants in the initial term to reflect the number of months for the permit whole sought. That's an addition. An addition, outdoor alcohol service and food service and alcohol served outdoors shall conclude at or before 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and at or before 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday. Right. And the third one is uh, the, these things, uh, the termination date and that they're non-transferable, which is that these are one-year um, permits from January 1st to December 31st. Right. And just, so we're making those three additions, no other changes. Right. Thank you. And Ted, did you want to speak to this? Or you're speaking on, uh, to the Madro Madrona uh, just tree. Just to the Madrona tree. Okay, so hold. So I need a motion for us to approve this policy, right? I think I, I think did, I did. You did? It's on the and did we vote it? And I second it. No, we didn't vote it. Oh, all right. So move and second it. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay. Now specifically to the request for a sidewalk cafe permit from the Madrona tree, Tr Ted Fields. Uh, it's Ted Fields, Economic Development Planner. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, Ms. Abraham was not able to attend uh, tonight um, due to family circumstances. Uh, and since I helped her draft the proposal, uh, I uh, volunteered to come and answer any questions you may have. Um, and I uh, went out to her establishment and uh, walked uh, the uh, proposed area that she proposes to use for outdoor seating. We measured it and I came up with the uh, plan before you. Um, and uh, it is important to note that she, uh, her plans are not adding uh, seating to her uh, establishment. She took seats away from the inside to use them on the outside. Questions from the board? Okay, Ms. Mann. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it's a question more than a comment and I'm gonna leave it to both you and Attorney Hine Sure. Um, how much leeway I can have with this question. <coughs> Excuse me. It's concerning um, 
the serving of alcohol um, outside. Okay. Um, if the manager or a representative were here, and unless Attorney Heim says this isn't a question that I could ask, um, I'm just curious about, you know, since it is the center and it is one of the few places that, you know, our middle school, high school kids sort of congregate around, as well as families, et cetera, um, how they intend uh, when they do serve alcohol, are they going to serve it in glasses, bottles? Is that something I, I can ask? Can I, have, I believe Tom majority tree does not have a liquor she license. She doesn't have a liquor license. Oh, she doesn't? It's the so next one. Okay. No, you know what? I saw in a thing, her application, something about alcohol. I apologize. And it just must be the standard language that's in the permit. Sorry about that. So that I don't have a question. Well, but any liquids, right? She'll be serving other liquids. Right. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, is there a motion? Mr. Dunn? I move approval subject conditions. Second. Oh, Mr. Burns, sorry. Um, no, I um, this isn't just for majority, but also um, I think speaks to the process in general. And I do just want to thank um, all of the town departments that were involved. There, um, you know, while this might not seem like a really big change, it did take quite a lot of work behind the scenes, um, both all from town council, the planning department, of course, uh, board of health and inspectional services. And um, they really did uh, put quite a lot of effort into this, and I um, don't want to just make these uh, vote on these and have them go through without uh, recognizing um, all their efforts. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Byrne. Uh, this is a hearing. Anybody wish to speak on this matter? Okay, on the motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by I'll second as well. Mr. Byrne. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank, thank you, you, Ted, for Thanks, being Ted. here. Um, sidewalk cafe permit for the common ground with learned council sir good evening sir board I'm here with Bob O'Gwen seems like we're always coming before you for something <laughs> um, Bob's seeking to have an outside cafe um, as detailed in the plans that we gave you and in his application he originally asked for approximately 19 tables 44 seats and the um, planning department is recommending 16 tables for 38 seats due to the, just the configuration of the area. The area he wanted to block off was about 22 by 29. He plans to have it set up with perimeters, plantings, um, open table service, obviously. He'll have a waitress and a um, hostess out there to guard the area, for lack of a better word. Uh, he won't have any beer bottles out there. And he, only if someone asks for a bottle of wine or champagne, everything will be served in glasses. Plans have no amplified or any music out there at all. It's just going to be folks in their conversations. Any questions? We'd be glad to entertain. When would you hope to set up? Did you give me approval? <laughs> Tomorrow. <Okay. laughs> I'll be there after the meeting. <laughs> Ms. Mahan. I just want to say um, to the attorney and also the applicant, I want to thank you um, for taking the serving of alcohol into consideration. And I only raise that because as I say many too many times, I do coach a high school sport at the high school, and I do hear from the players on the field, you know, in terms of making sure we sort of practice what we preach. And I, I yell at them and say, you know, if you friend me on Facebook, remember I'm a coach, and if I see you at a party with 10, 20 red Dixie cups, you're gonna be in an awful lot of trouble. So they can't sometimes conversely, you know, send that back my way. So that's the only reason I was, you know, I don't think it was something that we could require you to do, but I'm you know, just where it's, Arlington Center. I just want to say I do appreciate you taking that into consideration. There's also a fee that keeps a uh, degree in case someone, like, you don't have much spillage on bottles and someone walks away passing out from Boston to get a hotel and that stuff. So it's very covering all bases. Thank you very much. Mr. Byrne. Well, red solo cups. <laughs> <laughs> I might get in trouble saying that now that I think about it. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I, um, I actually have a question for town council on. Um, these permits. I'm, I'm looking through the reports. Um, this one's from Inspectional Services. It says um, that the applicant will need to present plans to the Department for Building Code Review prior. So and that's set forth in this application. So after we vote, they'll then have to go to Inspectional Services for approval. Correct? So if you approve all conditions precedent, one of the conditions that would obviously have to be met is having uh, it pass muster with Inspectional Services. Thank you. And I, so, I, I'm assuming so that set it up right away. Yeah, I'm assuming that yeah. Mr. Leone is. Yeah, we the plans have been yeah, mm -hmm. plans have been submitted. Just waiting for approval for him to approve. Excellent. We already run it by and meet all the regulations for bathrooms, for number of seats, etc. 
Thank you. Mr. Carroll. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> I, support, I support the application, uh, absolutely, and in principle, I, I think it's important to add some vibrancy to the to the center. I think it's important linchpin in our economic development strategy. I do note, though, that um, <clears throat> the the planning department has suggested cutting down the the number of requested tables by three, Correct. such that that they are not um, uh, <clears throat> encroaching on the, the CBS's front frontage. Um, and I, I wanted to uh, just get some feedback on that because my first first blush, I, I tend to agree with the planning department in their recommendation. Well, the, the uh, <clears throat> encroachment on CVS, I think the planning department anticipated that would happen because they want that eight foot yeah. distance between the planter, the tree, and the edge of common grounds proposed cafe area. Right. It's the same building owner, so it is not an issue with a, a foot or two overlap. But if the planning department is recommending that, I think Mr. O'Gwen would go along with it. It's a matter of six seats. Um, he'd, he'd rather work with the town than <coughs> fight about six seats. He's going to not like me for saying that, but. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I get a little bit concerned because it's, it's CVS now, but what if in the unlikely, uh, you know, occurrence that CVS were to go out, another establishment came in, you know, wanted to come in with a similar application, they wouldn't really have the opportunity if they're being encroached on, and presumably also. CVS has also is. Oh, is there one-year licenses? Right. True. We yeah. can always. I, yeah. True. Move back. Move over. True. Yeah. And should we? We've cut from what number of tables to what? Sixteen to thirteen. Sixteen. Okay. Mr. D uh, Joe, all set. Yeah. Yeah. I I was actually on the same question, so I had perhaps read the report a little bit differently, and I think. Mr. Fields wrote it so we can ask his opinion. Uh, but I, th I think, so I definitely understood that uh, we didn't want to encroach too closely on Madrona Tree because, and they also have a physical obstacle. So, you know, we've got one restaurant sitting next to another restaurant. It makes sense to keep that room. But uh, I kind of read it and I said, well, um, had you actually considered taking advantage and moving more, uh, like taking some of the frontage, a little bit of the frontage instead of CVS? Had you explored that? Or, or, or is you just not even interested in it at all? Or? Oh, no, I would be, but this Try the first year first and see yeah. how it goes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Like you said, it's a yearly application next year yeah. if, we, if we feel as needed or we okay. apply for more. All right. If you if you decide that you wanted those three, or those uh, that extra room in front of CVS, I personally would be interested in having that conversation. So, um, but I'm happy to support this uh, as written uh, and uh, as amended by Mr. Fields. Okay. Anybody here wishing to speak on this matter? What can we step down? Line up, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Greeley. Uh, my name is Michael Ruderman. I live at 9 Alton Street, which is right around the corner uh, from Broadway Plaza. I, I apologize. I didn't get the memo about No Time Mondays, uh, nor the memo about the switching name tags. I think it's going to be fun uh, for the <laughs> season. Joe. Oh, great. Excellent. <laughs> thank you, are, Mr. Ruderman. Just a bunch of ribbon cutters, Mr. Ruderman. <laughs> huh? Thank you for putting uh, an abundance of materials on, on the website. Uh, that, that, that's a great leap forward in being prepared for the meetings. I, I uh, th thank the board for, um, for, uh, for doing that. Um, speaking to the uh, petition directly, um, this seems like an extraordinarily generous uh, petition that uh, the board is considering. 638 square feet, 38 additional seats, uh, along with the almost 200 that um, the redevelopment board has has permitted for this location existing, which is, is incorrect in the applicant's uh, petition before you. It's not 100. It's it's much closer to 200, including including the seats in. Excuse me. 194. 194. Uh, so 40, 38 on top of 194 with no additional parking requirements. The $50 fee. I know that's in the policy you just approved. How on earth did you come up with $50? I mean. $50, that's what, one night's tips from, from the 38 additional uh, seats? It, it seems like an extraordinarily generous deal. What I'm asking for tonight in terms of relief is please revise the permit to 10 p.m. for all nights of operations. Please take back the 10 to 11 hour on the weekends. You call it ambiance, I call it listening to a dinner party that my neighbors are having until 11 o'clock every night and that's their business. 
I mean, it, it, and that's their granted business. Uh, so I am asking you for that relief. We have been thwarted in our attempts to get no loading zone signs on Alton Street. We've been thwarted in our attempts to cease all the evening, uh, excuse me, morning 3 a.m. trash pickups because uh, health department tells us that, that, that they're legally uh, permitted, although not encouraged, but we're thwarted in, in our our uh, requests for relief in those matters, can we please cut back the peti petition that's before you tonight to 10 p.m. all seven nights a week? Thank you. Thank you. All right, Bob Radosha, Columbia Road. Uh, I said it before, and I just need to say it again. Uh, I think the fact that we're taking 600 square feet of public space, turning it into private space with no public access, doesn't feel good to me. Okay, the deed is done. Uh, the other one is the uh, $50 th rate uh, is just, again, I think outrageous. Okay, the uh, Madrona tree, okay, they don't, they're not serving anything and it's a different setup there. Uh, the question I have, it's not clear to me, um, when we talk about reducing the seating, is that to allow for space between Madrona tree and common ground uh, for passage, you know, people have to get to the bus from that yeah. side, and Madrona Tree goes right up to the curb, so there's no room on that side, uh, and then, or otherwise, you'd have to walk all the way around it to get to the bus from, so are we trying to create an aisle or something there by reducing that? Uh, I think, Ted, would you mind answering that for us? Our economic development. Yes, that was, that was the main rationale behind our recommendation in reducing the seating capacity proposed by the uh, Common Ground to allow uh, a corridor between the outdoor seating for Madrona Tree and the outdoor seating proposed for Common Ground. Okay. And it really works to the benefit of both establishments to allow wait staff to access that area. Okay, thank you. Yep. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. I may not be so short. Let the hear these fellows can say it. I love St. Mark's Plaza in Venice. I love Paris. Sit out in a cafe, have a glass of wine. I'm part of the ATED committee. I also live across the street. I like the idea very much. But I'd like to ask you a few questions about policy because I have a feeling you are establishing a policy at this point. Now, everybody who has an outdoor cafe or outdoor seating, if a Yummy puts a table out there, do they pay 50 bucks? If a what puts, I'm yeah, sorry. What did you say? If yummy. a what puts? If yummy. Yummy, yummy puts a table oh, yes. on the sidewalk, do they pay 50 bucks? Yep. Do they go okay. through the process? They should go through process. They would have to right. go through the process, right. Okay, so uh, the policy in this town is to allow the use of public space for 50 bucks, whether you have a cafe table in front of a little store, or whether you have a 44 seat facility, okay? Uh, remember, I'm in favor of it, but what I am not in favor of is foolishness. I believe that you folks if you're going to prove it tonight, fine, that's okay with, for me. But you really ought to get one of these committees together to come up with a policy that makes sense, okay? What uh, Mr. Wooderman said about $50, he's right. What Mr. Wooderman said about crowds, he's right. But you know what? The ambiance, in my opinion, uh, overcomes that. In my opinion, I like crowds. I like that kind of crowd. As long as you watch out for how the, the booze is served, I'll be sitting at one of the tables, I assure you. As long as you watch out as to how the children are, 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 are attended to. Why? Because I guess a teenager can walk into common ground and get something to eat, and they don't get thrown out because liquor is served. But I really believe you folks ought to think about this. Approve it tonight if you want. You guys are in charge. But you really ought to think about some pricing that makes sense based upon, based upon 
the amount of seats involved, okay? Not based upon whether there's a lot of uh, money to be made on booze or food, based upon the number of seats involved. It just does not make sense to an old retired accountant that a 44 unit place using public property should pay 50 bucks, so if that's the number of 44, and a place that has a little cafe table outside of a, a yogurt place should pay 50 bucks. I'm talking thousands in my mind. 44, hey, it sounds like to me, I don't know, eight, ten thousand dollars might be worth it. Yeah, sure, uh, just sure. as a point of clarification, uh, the Common Ground's original application did propose using part of the frontage in front of CVS. Uh, the planning department has talked to the manager of CVS on a number of occasions. They are fine with having seating in front of their establishment mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, they just are concerned uh, about having trash picked up uh, regularly uh, from the outdoor seating uh, with two covered trash receptacles in the outdoor seating area, which I believe uh, you uh, have in your proposal. Um, and that is their main concern uh, at this point. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say to Mr. Peluso and Mr. Ruderman, um, in terms of the $50 um, fee, I'm happy to look at, you know, we are establishing policy. and. We no, no, I, I just want to say, I'm always happy to look at something, but I'm also always cognizant of the fact, I know when we gave out the all alcohol licenses, so many people came to me, thought it's, this is gonna be a great windfall for the town in terms of how much we were going to get. Um, and perhaps Attorney Heim could say it better than I, but we are guided by the law in terms of what we can charge for a fee, we have to justify it with the administrative time. P perhaps you could say it, but I'm always willing to look at it, but I'm not gonna encapsulate it well. I, I actually think the town manager uh, wanted to speak on this point. Cool. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and through you to uh, Ms. Mahan. Yeah, very, very simply put, the, um, the price of a permit or a license uh, by law and case precedent is supposed to be based on the cost of producing that license or permit, not the revenue generating capability or the size or scope of what that permit is covering. So, though the board, it's certainly within the board's jurisdiction to ask myself or, or, or the board staff to do a deeper analysis of what the costs are of assessing this permit and in the future consider a different permit cost, uh, basing it on what the revenue ge generating capability I think would be a, a poor and legal, uh, in a road with certainly with legal liability. I guess I just would appreciate at some time in the future, just in terms of where this is a new policy, which does involve public land, um, which some of the um, speakers have highlighted, um, what the opinion um, either through the chair from the town manager and or town council would be. Yeah, at, at the board's direction, I'd be happy to analyze. I mean, nothing what, what exhaustive, I, just in terms of, you know, I, I think I've always wanted to, you know, in terms of some other fees, but I've always been back down to the point of you can only charge as much administratively that you disperse and, and seen, overseen that fee. Okay. Yep, Mr. Dunn. Yeah, I took a quick look at this, uh, and I found that in Cambridge they charge $75. They were just the first one that came to mind because, and I couldn't find anywhere. I thought about it from the angle of, like, is there, like, a rental fee to be found here? And uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't find a good example of that being done elsewhere. Uh, and so I definitely, I am definitely of the mind to approve this today as is because I would want this experiment to go forward. I want to try it. I want to see how it works. And uh, we'll be back here in January and February looking at it again. And if we find a different way that makes sense to talk about additional revenue that passes uh, muster, uh, I'll be happy to. So I'm happy to support with it as is, and I'm happy to you know, see what we learn over the next six months. Okay. Anything else on the board? Someone want to make a motion? No approval. No approval. Is second. there a second? Uh, Mr. Oh, Chair. Sorry, Mr. Are Chair. we moving approval as applied or moving approval as recommended by the planning department? As you were saying with the before. smaller size, basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. They've already acknowledged. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I agree. I mean, it's um, that I'm aware of at this point. These are the only two that have asked us uh, for this. Others will come forward. Let's see. Let's let's uh, do it for a year and let's see what happens. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Best of luck. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks. Citizens Open Forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration to the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the Open Forum was established. I was asked 
why we put that in here. And the point is, someone coming up now, we don't know what they're going to talk about. So if they do bring up an issue, we need time to put it on an agenda, and, and we others should have an opportunity to respond to it if necessary. It should be noted that there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. Can I have the list? Do we have anybody who signed? Has anybody signed in to speak on the Citizen Open Forum? Okay. You, are, you took care of it there? Okay. I guess that's it, Marie. Okay, thank you. Right. Yep, and, and he has ceded his time to me, which I appreciate, Robert, thank you. Uh, for approval, the Arlington International Film Festival banners, uh, this is something that we did put on a um, uh, table. Uh, you were unable to be with us at the last meeting, and I wanted to give you a chance to speak. I'm hesitant to approve it since the festival is actually held in uh, Cambridge. So that's just my position, but... That's why it's back on the agenda, Joe. We want okay. to If you'd like to speak on it, please. Yeah, yeah sure. First, right. Right. Please. Yep. Good evening. I'm not going to go over, you know, the exact same things that we talked about before, but I do want to remind the selectmen that we are truly good ambassadors for Arlington. Uh, whether the actual festival is held here within these gates, you know, or the, these, these perimeters, uh, the name is still out there. Um, we are actually selling discounted festival passes now, um, and the advertisement is for three local restaurants in Arlington that will, the festival pass purchasers are going to have 20% off, not just during the festival, but from October 15th, when the festival begins through December the 15th, um, we're going to be previewing the film from the Old Schwab Mill during the festival. And also, we have invited ATED to have a table in the lobby of the, uh, of the Kendall Square Cinema for eight days. So we continue to partner with many organizations uh, here in the city. Um, we're promoting all of the best of, of Arlington, and uh, we just hope that you consider that when you're making this decision, because um, I think that the whole idea is to get word out beyond Arlington's borders what Arlington offers, and we can't do that unless we're outside and speaking to the greater Boston area. So I appreciate your, your consideration. Okay, Mr. Carroll. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I was at the, I, as you know, you know, any application for banners uh, from a <coughs> private organization needs to be sponsored by a, a town organization. And uh, so um, the ATED, the Arlington Tourism Economic Development Committee, did vote to uh, sponsor the festival again, as, as we have um, in the past. Um, I think that April addressed some of the, um, the reasoning behind, behind this. Um, but <clears throat> I, I think that we saw that the, uh, the Arlington International Film Festival is actually, it's much more than an event, it, it's a program that, that um, continues throughout the year. Um, you know, earlier this evening we heard from our new uh, library director and uh, the AIFF um, throughout the year um, sponsors, uh, I think it's monthly, uh, film programs at our libraries, which are uh, very well attended. They uh, co-sponsor uh, showings with uh, ACMI. Uh, I think there was just one with a, a film that was premiered uh, from uh, Iran, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, the work with, um, with Schwann Mill, as well as the programs with the Arlington School Department. Um, I think you know that uh, the, the, uh, the program AAFF has been you know, honored by the, our uh, Chamber of Commerce, by our uh, Rotary Club, I believe, by the uh, Arlington Center for the Arts, and most recently by the Martin Luther King um, Celebration Committee, partly because of the work with the Winford Rembert program um, that, that took place in, in, the, um, in the schools as well. So I think that we saw it that um, as far as the connection to Arlington, um, the film festival is actually an Arlington-based program that continues to, to engage with a lot of aspects of our community. Um, uh, to enrich them. They, they've been partners in the, the cultural district um, efforts as well. Um, that's part of it. Um, 
the particular, uh, my understanding is the request is for two banners, and they're centered around a, a kickoff celebration, which would actually take place here in our town hall. Um, just as there, there was also a, uh, there's a poster contest which has taken place every year and has been opened up. And uh, Mr. Ardito, our, our uh, visual arts director from the high school, MCs it. Um, and uh, you know, students from Arlington Catholic, students from Arlington High School have participated in those poster contests as well. So I think that when ATED took a look at this, you know, we didn't take a specific position on banners or, or anything specifically. What we said is we want to, we want to continue sponsoring the um, Arlington International Film Festival for s several reasons. And I think there, I see three other members of the committee here, and they could correct me if I'm if I'm misstating anything. Partly it's because we do have local business sponsors who are continuing to, um, to sponsor the festival as well. Um, a lot of ATED's activity has been Arlington centered, trying to get people to come in. And from my point of view, when I voted to support sponsoring the, the festival itself, it looked like a good opportunity to kind of try to promote the town outward. Um, and uh, from that perspective, I think I, I'm feeling comfortable supporting the, the, the banners this year, as long as they are centered around, you know, my selectman's hat, they're centered around the kickoff event here at Arlington Town Hall um, and helping to, to kind of um, remind people of what Arlington has to offer and how we are kind of a, a it, this actually represents a step where we're now a cradle of, of kind of cultural activity in, in our area. So. Um, I'm going to move approval of, of, of the, uh, the request. Hope somebody will second. And, uh, and I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. So you know the request is for September 14th to October 26th. Correct. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Who else would like to speak on this? Mr. Dunn? Um, I'm, I'm, I guess I'd, I'm, I'm persuaded that the value of the interaction we're getting, particularly in places like the Kendall Cinema and the, acti the activities within town, plus those are, so I, I'm, I do plan on supporting this. Uh, frankly, what would change my mind is if uh, ATED or the economic director said, you know, I don't think we're getting a good deal. If they were, if they were sa saying something else, I would change my vote, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm listening to them. Okay. Yes, Ms. Murray. Um, make it brief. Um, First, I'm, I'm just concerned about a precedent that we're, se we're setting. You know, I think of any other Arlington nonprofit um, that's based out of Arlington, um, and where we are giving six weeks, basically, of prime space to advertise. It is a Cambridge event. Um, it's Arlington-based, Arlington International Film Festival. Um, I do take uh, to heart the remarks that Mr. Kiro said regarding things being centered on, you know, the kickoff at mm -hmm. Town Hall and all those activities. Um, I'm willing to approve this for this year because I'm hoping perhaps maybe this is an anomaly and we can get it more Arlington based back next year. I would say if this same request came before us next year, um, putting the precedent aside, I would really take to, um, to the core of Mr. Carroll's remarks that I personally would say I'll approve banners that s center and focus solely around the Arlington events, the kickoff at Town Hall not the whole six weeks. So um, I, I kind of get a sense that, you know, something happened this year and, and the event is happening and, and it's in Cambridge. I think you're hearing um, from all the members of the board in various tones and cadence <laughs> um, in terms of, you know, myself, my personal concern of setting a precedent of, you know, allowing a Cambridge-based event, so much um, exclusivity here in Arlington. So I'm willing to do it this year um, because I get a sense maybe it can get back into Arlington more next year. If not, I'm not saying um, you shouldn't come back with the same event in the same venue, but I certainly would sort of hold more true to, I'd be willing to, and this is just one vote, you gotta get to three, um, willing to put the banners up that promote the Arlington-based events. And so that's myself personally, but I'm willing to approve it for this year. Mr. Byrne. Um, once again, I'm, uh, as I said at the last meeting, I'm very happy to support this. I think that Arlington benefits by this festival. Um, and I think, uh, piggybacking on Joe's comments, I think that we have, uh, the town has a chance to benefit even more so by having it in um, Cambridge, by having those people who attend it in Cambridge then come to Arlington to see what we have um, to offer. And, and so I'm excited about it. And, and 
Well, it may be unfortunate that this is um, not, not going to be in Arlington. It, you know, I, I think we still have a great deal to um, gain by through this festival, and I'm, I'm very happy to support this. And um, you know, moving forward, I'd still be happy to under these same circumstances. Thank you. Okay. Did I see hands out here? Does someone wish? Yep. Get in line, please. Uh, they are personal friends of mine. I am great admirers of them. They're two of the best entrepreneurs I've met in years, okay? Uh, I want to congratulate what you guys have just said. And the reason why I want to congratulate it is because Joe wasn't at the last ATED meeting. At the last ATED meeting, we specifically said we support the banners. So I think it is wonderful that you agree with the ATED committee. And I also agree that it's one year at a time. Thanks. Hi, I'm Tom Davison, also with the ATED committee. Um, so when they came to us to ask if we would sponsor the event, we had the exact same discussion that you're having right now. It's like, why would we want to promote an event to send people out of town? even though it's named the Arlington International Film Festival. Um, part, of the con part of the consideration, and my initial reaction was, uh, and I'm a big supporter of the film festival. I've attended, I've helped, I, I think it's a wonderful thing, I think, it's, I think it's a great cultural asset, but why would we want to send people out of town? The thought was to then feature this um, launch event at Town Hall to, to focus that. The economic reality is at the Regent Theater, they have not had the audience. The heart of independent film in this community is, in this area, is the Kendall Square Cinema. To get economic development tourism, using Arlington as a brand, as I think Mr. Byrne just, just said very, very well, I think there's an opportunity for us to help brand Arlington as a brand, as who we are, as this cultural renaissance that Mr. Crow talked to. There's a lot of cultural activity going on here. There's, there's, there's a lot of good stuff happening. If this is an opportunity for us to be, for them to be an ambassador for us, to get the Arlington name out there, not just to put banners up and show films, but at the event itself, to be promoting Arlington there, I think there's a commercial tourism benefit. We don't have a department in this town to do cultural tourism. We don't, we don't have a, a staff person doing that. I think when we have organizations like this that if we can r find the right way to work with them, there are opportunities there. And I agree, I've, you know, banners that were just sending them just for go to the Kendall Square, I wouldn't support that either. But I think with the idea of having a centered idea around the launch event, and it's true that all the other things that they do throughout the year here and will continue to do with the Robbins Library, the high school, and others, there is a benefit to, to us. That doesn't mean they, they, they should get a banner, but it's not like they're just pulling up roots and taking advantage of promotional opportunities. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Is there a motion? Yeah. Yeah. Move I move approval. approval. Seconded? Yep. yep. Um, well, I'm way in the minority here, but Arlington would still benefit a lot more during those eight days if people were walking around our center instead of Kendall Square, but I give up. I hear, I hear it's four to one here, so I will support it for this year, but I don't like it. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item 10 for approval, the 17th Annual Feast of the East. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, Jan. Hi. Hi. Um, this year, Capitol Square is in the midst of our great big construction adventure. <laughs> and we're very happy that we're able to have the festival this year. And we need to thank the Department of Transportation and Lynch Construction for accommodating us. And uh, also want to uh, thank the town particularly Adam, for your support and immediate response during the construction of the sidewalk there between Winter and Cleveland when we saw a problem with the design. Um, and that's been fixed, being fixed. I think we're going to be okay for the festival. But um, I just want to make a point of um, asking everybody to support the businesses on that block because mm -hmm. they've really had a hard time during this delay 
So everybody should go have a drink at Olivio's and do some shopping at Love and Artware and um, come down and support the festival. Um, so we ask for your approval to have this event. Adam and I uh, had our hair cut and I did Joey's. almost fall yeah. walking into uh, <laughs> Allenton. The, uh, Where are Joe and I getting our hair cut? Yeah. <laughs> so come down and buy some razor blades. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what shape will sidewalks be in? Uh, so the goal is to start pouring the uh, dyed red concrete tomorrow uh, from winter to Cleveland and then have the gray portion poured between now and Friday uh, with the intermittent showers we have. It'll be a little dicey, but the goal is to have uh, concrete laid and where concrete can't be laid because of utility work, have asphalt laid so that we have one flush service. Good. Oh, sir. Yes. Great. Sorry. Yep. Ms. Mahan. Uh, first, uh, move approval and just sort of a situational comment. Um, on the day of the event, the Saturday, June 13th, um, if something should arise in terms of construction, um, has a point person or will a point person be identified to Jan or her designee in terms of if for some reason a subcontractor sh shows up that didn't get a memo um, in an area that we determined there wouldn't be work on. So I'm just thinking of, you know, doing, you know, events up at Bracken School. So in terms of if something should arise that was out of the normal course of plans, is there a point person? Will it be um, the highest ranking police officer there? Will it be someone from DPW? So MassDOT and Lynch have been aware of this date since kickoff uh, this year. So I, I would be very surprised if this was to happen. Uh, but should it happen, uh, it would certainly be the shift commander uh, okay, so at that's what I, uh, I mean, I used to work for the phone company. And, and I know what went on, on up at Sims. And I know how many times we had to call Rick Gallagher. Not many, but we did have to call on a Sunday. And it usually was a contractor that claimed they didn't know that something was going on, but they figured they could get some work in, they had some downtime, and could send some guys out. It's a very my, minute possibility. I just wanted to make sure that you're clear that whoever the shift commander is from the Arlington Police Department, if something should arise. Appreciate that. There's, there have in the past been problems getting police officers to provide adequate crossing help at the three crosswalks, and we're hoping that this year we can get adequate staff there. I think this year, because you're not falling on Arlington High graduation, you're not falling on the Greek festival. I think we'll be, so, sometimes a lot of that happens is there are so many events and we do go out to city of Medford and town of Lexington. Mm -hmm. But I think just in terms of looking at the social calendar this weekend, um, and I'm not sure if Arlington Live is this weekend also, but I think it should be okay. Thank you. Yeah. Move, move approval. Move, oh, second. was it already moved? Diane moved it. Moved. Yeah, Diane moved it. You'll say a second. I'll second it. Yep. Other discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank Best you. Thank Hope you. to see you there. Thanks for doing Thank it. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, art, uh, item 11, uh, this is for approval of the Arlington Alive Summer Arts Block Party, Saturday, June 20th. Is that you, Mr. Carroll? Okay. <laughs> it's a nice poster. Yeah. Uh, we're, of course, uh, as um, A Ted, we are huge supporters of Feast of the East and are so happy and impressed with all the work that they've been able to do to pull this off, especially with all the construction going on. So we're very, very much supportive of that and very happy that they're also using the Arlington Alive brand. Part of the branding I mentioned before, uh, it's something we're trying to do uh, to mm -hmm. brand Arlington as a cultural destination. Um, part of the request I have for the board for ATED for this party is to hang the Arlington Alive banners again as we have the past two years to help promote the event in the town of Arlington. Um, it's on June 20th, Saturday, June 20th. Um, we are asking to be able to use Broadway Plaza again, uh, close off that area from Alton Street and down by from the fire station up. Um, we will have performances. The main stage will be on Broadway Plaza as it was in the past two years where there's parking spaces. Uh, we'll have the artisan booths there as well. Um, it would mean a temporary bus stop to be located on Mass Ave beside the Veterans Memorial as we have the past two years and the police department's been very helpful in, in uh, helping us get that done. Um, one thing that didn't get left off on, on this um, paper that you all have this year, we were trying to expand the festival and bring it down to the Jefferson Cutter Green 
as well to really make it kind of a block party festival. Um, so we're asking a request also to be able to use the green on that day and a couple of the parking spots behind, directly adjacent to the, the rear side of the Jefferson Cutter House to use as a staging area for trucks to come in, for musicians to drop things off and on. It doesn't block any egress at all. Um, I know there's on the on the east side, there is a driveway to some small apartments and the back side of some of the businesses that wouldn't be blocked at all. It's just the, the spaces that are directly behind the Jefferson Carter House. Um, also too, in Russell Common Lot, as we have the past two years, I'm asking if we can suspend the uh, parking for the day, both to en uh, encourage attendance and to make up for the uh, lost parking spaces in Broadway Plaza during the day. Mr. Carroll, I'll move approval. Is there a second? second. Discussion. Um, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, one thing that, you know, this has really been Tom's baby, uh, and he's uh, carried the, uh, nobody's carried the, uh, the ball more than he has over the last few years on, on this, and um, it, it has been very successful. Um, I think there are some innovative new ideas this year. I mean, partly, I think Tom mentioned one thing that's being asked is the uh, Jefferson Cutter Lawn for some of the, uh, I guess the idea is the family stage at this, at it's this point. true. Yes. The, there used to be some sound bleed between the stages um, down uh, by Broadway Plaza, and there was also a thought that, um, that maybe the event didn't um, adequately encompass all of the, the uh, business district along that way. Um, I guess some of the thinking, unless this has changed, I missed the last meeting when I was out no, of town. that's all correct. Uh, some of the thinking was also to, to move the, the food booths down towards the, the Jefferson Cutter area. In, in the past, they've been on Alton Street, thinking being that, that by moving them down to um, Jefferson Cutter, they're not um, competing with the other restaurants that are right in the Broadway Plaza area, but they do provide an area um, <clears throat> Uh, on the other end to, to uh, get food for families. And it's local Arlington uh, restaurants who, who uh, usually come and, and um, take out those, um, those uh, booths. So I thought that was a <coughs> fairly um, a new twist to, to the event that I think uh, we're hoping will be positive. Part of the effect of doing that also is I, I think you know that in the past, um, even though this request is to, to block off Alton Street, again, right at that, that small section uh, right before um, Broadway. In the past, the food booths have been there, and there have been issues with, um, with uh, the local residents, with people unloading and loading right in front. This way, we can now have the loading and unloading right there in that Alton Street area where there isn't that, that con direct conflict with um, residents um, in, in the area. So I, I want to you know, thank Tom for, for um, you know, taking all of that into consideration. And I know that another, another thing that, that um, <clears throat> I know you've been working very hard on is is working more closely with some of the merchants there in the center to, to actually take co-ownership of, of this along with with um, ATED as well because the, the whole point is to, to try to um, um, <clears throat> you know promote the commerce there. There's a lot of discussion about the timing in the past um, it's been in July um, some of the thinking was to try it in, in June when more people are still around in town it's Father's Day weekend. Hopefully, a lot of people will be out shopping, um, or be, will be, uh, you know, incented to come out and and uh, and shop at that time and shop in Arlington for um, for Father's Day. So um, I enthusiastically su support it, and uh, thank you, Tom, for your efforts. Mr. Dunn. So uh, were you here early in the her here earlier in the meeting when we gave uh, outdoor seating permits? All right. Yes. Yes. No conflicts. Common Ground, I specifically reached out to Common Ground to be a sponsor this year. They're in the heart of it. This is exactly from the economic development part of things and the tourism part of things. It's exactly what we want to have happening. That they can have, if, if they can have it up and running, Madrona Tree has benefited from that the past couple of years. There's, it's to generate traffic through Arlington Center. We, while we advertise in Arlington, we advertise in Belmont, Winchester, Lexington, Woburn. Um, and if I could point out the back of Marta Varea, who's uh, a, um, a part-time, but working more than she should, uh, administrator, uh, event manager this year. She's been doing, she's an Arlington resident. Uh, she's been doing a fantastic job. Um, the idea is to really take advantage of those things. I hope the timing, truly, that Common Ground can have their space up and running by June 20th, that'd be great. Thank you. 
Was it a reward for her to be able to come and watch a selectman's meeting? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, she lost the bet. <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping next year she may be standing here making this presentation <laughs> instead of I, um, in the best way. I, am, I also um, very much look forward to supporting this. Um, I am looking at the suspension of parking fees, and I just think it's important to note that while I will support it this year, um, we are pu uh, putting in some new meters, so I think that moving forward, uh, we might live within um, utilizing those meters at that time, but I know the issues that it faces now. And uh, if we are still using those meters next year, please everyone get your pitchforks and come at all of us because they'll, um, <laughs> they'll be gone by then. But I, you're our representative. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> we need, but, but, we but I thought one. we were a team, so I figured <laughs> not everyone, on that. everyone deserves it. <laughs> we are, unless they're not replaced, Steve. <laughs> you're on your own, buddy, Ms. Mahan. Um, uh, just two things. One is a sort of a question ca clarification. Um, I thought I had seen a piece of correspondence possibly from Officer Rateau. I know it says in the application a police detail at um, Broadway and Franklin, but I thought there was also a police detail at Mass and Medford, or no? So there should be two, okay. Oh. There's only one in oh, here. that's okay, I didn't, I, I hadn't heard that. Oh, there's, there's only one in here. And then um, I'm definitely going to support this um, with the caveat that um, the additional request um, that the uh, chairman of the board of selectmen through the town manager that the three applicable departments, police chief, fire chief, as well as board of health, just so they know that the food is moving to that area. I know when we do town day, if you're serving food on a sidewalk and you have certain kind of vegetable oil, there's certain rules and regulations. So my fear is that maybe some of the food merchants went and applied for the permit in one spot. So four sets of restrictions with the Board of Health um, were um, imposed. And now if they hear it's on the green, they may say you also need to okay. add five and six. And what I would just like to let the um, town manager, let the two police chief and fire chief, just so they know, so they can perhaps make a unilateral decision during the day if they decide that one of the details should be moved um, down to um, Mass and Mystic Route 60. Um, from one of the other two sites. Or it may change during the day in terms of the traffic. You know, coming in, maybe the two officers need to be in, in two spaces, and as the event closes, they may need to switch it up. But I just want to make sure the police and fire chief are aware of that, and um, I, I know they'll handle it accordingly. Absolutely. If that's Thank okay. You. And just make sure your merchants d maybe double check with the Board of Health to make sure everything's in tune in terms of the permits. Thank you. Not we'll that do. they wouldn't, but. Sure, sure. Thank you. You don't have to worry, I don't charge Buddy L. Uh, I want to congratulate the Board of Selectmen again. Uh, I want to congratulate him for two things. Back last June, you approved the plan for the visitor center. You also approved a plan to use the performance terrace. You also approved the town manager deciding on a fee for people of the right level, shall we say, being able to use the performance terrace. And we just got on Arlington Alive Day the first paying customer at the Uncle Sam Plaza site right next to the visitor center Adam came up with the dollars that we should charge. They not only agreed with the dollars, they're paying a little bit more because Tom negotiated a very good deal with them. The, uh, the customer, to call them that, is Whole Foods. They are going to be giving away water and Slurpees. So stop by. You had me at Slurpee. <laughs> okay, all set time. Do, uh, so on the motion by Mr. Kuro, seconded by Ms. Mahan. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. June 20th, good luck. And now a discussion on the project eligibility application and Oak Tree Development Proposal 40B project at the Mugar site 
Uh, we have our special counsel with us, but we'll start with Mr. Heim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As the board will recall, um, the board was received a copy of an application for site approval for 40B um, housing development in the area that we commonly refer to as the Mugar property. This uh, initial letter was accompanied by some 196 pages of additional documentation which lay out various different pieces of the proposal for approval. Um, as the board also will recall, um, we've retained special counsel, uh, the firm of Whitney and Huggins, as 40B specialists to uh, help guide us with their expertise in this process and also to help supplement our available legal resources for this important uh, matter. And um, in anticipation of Mass Housing providing us the, a letter asking for our comments and our feedback with respect to the site approval, um, Whitney and Huggins developed a letter asking for an extension of time to reflect the board's uh, uh, needs to collect additional information. Um, since that time, we actually received the Mass Housing letter, which uh, triggers the comment period and are g uh, currently giving us until um, 30 days, essentially, to provide comments and also uh, have scheduled a site visit for the property. Um, so there's a number of things for the, for the board to consider. But um, at this point in time, I'd like to introduce our special counsel to the board so that uh, he can discuss the process from the Board of Selectmen's perspective, answer any questions that you may have, talk a little bit about the extension letter and what the process will be like uh, going forward on just this piece of the site approval uh, before Mass Housing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, members of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, with me this evening is Barbara Huggins. Uh, Barbara is my law partner. And it's a pleasure uh, to be here. What I'd like to talk about, Mr. Chairman, um, through you and, and to the town manager and with town council is really the process that is about to unfold. By receiving the re request from Mass Housing today, the standard form is you have 30 days, you, the Board of Selectmen, have 30 days to provide Mass Housing with comments on this application. 30 days in a regular application, let alone a complicated application, is insufficient period of time. So what Town Council and I have discussed is a request, a draft request from you to Mass Housing for an extension to 90 days. Mass Housing could do one of two things. They could say yes, they could say no, or they, I suppose, could say we'll give you 60. But our opinion is you should at least ask. It's a complicated application, it's a complicated process, and very few communities could pull the type of substantive comments that you need to pull together in 30 days. So I think that's step one. Then the thing that I'd like to discuss with the board to the extent that you have allocated some time to have this conversation is once you provide comments to Mass Housing, there's a presumption that Mass Housing is going to issue the project eligibility letter. You can count on one hand the number of times that Mass Housing has denied the issuance of a project eligibility letter. So even if the selectmen's comments are diametrically opposed to a potential project, I think the presumption should be and has been that Mass Housing is going to issue this project eligibility letter. So what is the project eligibility letter? It's a ticket. It's a ticket to the Board of Appeals. You can't apply to a Board of Appeals for a comprehensive permit without two things. One is a project eligibility letter from a state agency or federal agency, but Really, the state agency is the only game in town currently. And then the second piece is an eligible applicant. Almost anybody today is an eligible applicant, public agency, nonprofit agency, or a private agency that calls itself a limited dividend organization. So with those two things in hand, letter from Mass Housing and a limited dividend organization, I now can apply to the Board of Appeals. So the Board of Selectmen starts the process but your involvement in that process is really limited in terms of regulatory controls to right now. Because once the ticket is issued, and again, we should assume it will be issued, the action, so to speak, is all at the Board of Appeals level. The Board of Selectmen has an opportunity to comment throughout the process. You obviously have political capital in the process, but you have no regulatory capital. So your role right now is, first and foremost, it's very important. Mass Housing may listen to you, they may not, but what we have found is Mass Housing will listen to your legislative delegation. So to the extent that your legislative delegation is supportive of the position that the Board of Selectmen take, 
we recommend that you take advantage of that. Uh, Mass Housing is a quasi-state agency. They respond to political responses, and we have seen that in the past. So I think it's an opportunity for the Board of Selectmen to get fully engaged in this, whether or not Mass Housing is going to respond to your itemized suggestions or comments is really a different story. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to talk about the process from then on, what happens at the Board of Appeals, but I know you have a busy agenda, so I, I guess I'll leave that up to you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what's the pleasure of the Board? Mr. Dunn. I'd be interested in hearing a short version of what happens next. I think it would be very educational. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. So, the... What I asked. I'd like to hear what happens next, Elsie. So what happens next, let's assume a project eligibility letter is issued. The applicant now has that in hand. It's an eligible application. They apply to the Board of Appeals for a comprehensive permit. So a comprehensive permit is a request for the Board of Appeals to issue all locally available permits. Comprehensive one-stop shopping is the concept. It's not exactly true, but Essentially, I applied to the Board of Appeals for a permit that would include all locally approvable permits. For example, a sign code. For example, waivers to zoning. For example, waivers to Board of Health regulations to the extent they're, they're relevant. All locally obtainable permits. Under the Wetlands Protection Act, the Conservation Commission is issuing a state permit locally. So the applicant cannot ask for a waiver from state permits, even though those are issued locally. A second example is the state building code that's issued by your building commissioner, but it's still a state permit. So the applicant can and will ask for waivers from virtually all local regulations that they believe affect this project. Whether the Board of Appeals decides to grant those is a different story. So now the application goes to the Board of Appeals. The Board of Appeals has 30 days to open a public hearing. Once the public hearing is opened, the board has 15 days, one five, very short period of time under the regulations, to declare its belief that the town has accomplished one of the safe harbor provisions of the statute. The most commonly referenced safe harbor provision is being at 10% of the housing stock being subsidized. But there are other safe harbor provisions, including having land area that comprises or that is comprised of 1.5% of subsidized affordable housing. <coughs> so it's entirely possible that Arlington has met a safe harbor, and that's a discussion that the Board of Appeals needs to be prepared for because they only have 15 days from the opening of the hearing. And Barbara and I can tell you there isn't a community out there, big or small, rich or poor, that can scramble in 15 days to do the kind of calculations that are necessary to assert safe harbor. So the safe harbor calculation is very important. It has to be played within 15 days under the regulations. If it is played, if the Board of Appeals has a good faith belief that the town has achieved safe harbor, then the applicant has a 30-day appeal period to challenge that. That appeal goes to DHCD. If DHCD overturns the board, then the board can appeal that decision to the Housing Appeals Committee. And during this process, the entirety of the public hearing process has been stayed, has been frozen. The town of Stoneham is in the middle of that right now. And it's been now almost nine months of a frozen process. Assuming that the town cannot assert the safe harbor status, the board has had 30 days to open a hearing. They must close the hearing within 180 days, six months of the opening, and they must render a decision within 40 days of the closing at 180. So it's 30 plus 180 plus 40, and then there's a 20-day appeal period. The reason the numbers are important is they're exact, unless the applicant's willing to provide some extension. They're precise, and they're very short. When the regulations changed radically in 2008, one of the most monumental changes was taking away from the Board of Appeals the ability to keep the hearing open while it gathers new evidence. Now the Board only has 180 days. So during that process is really what's the interesting part. All local boards have an opportunity and we would argue an obligation to get involved. That includes the Board of Selectmen, the Conservation Commission, the Development Board, the Historic District Commission, you name it. <coughs> and that is to provide the Board of Appeals with comments as to the logic, the consistency, the relevance of the application to the town's comprehensive plan, 
the town's open space plan, economic development plans, whatever it may be. One of the issues that will be before the Board of Appeals is the request by the applicant to grant waivers from local zoning, among others. And that waiver request can be granted by the Board of Appeals if, and this is the most confusing part of the statute, if failure to grant the waiver would render the project uneconomic. What is uneconomic? In a rental project, it's defined by the state subsidizing agency. It's based on a theory called limited dividend return, an annual limited dividend return. On a sales project, it's based on the percentage of total development costs. So there are numbers, there are bright lines in the sand. If the developer can demonstrate that but for the waiver from setbacks, density, height, frontage, but for the waiver the project would be uneconomic, then the Board of Appeals will be overturned if it goes up on appeal to the Housing Appeals Committee. If the developer cannot show that the project will be uneconomic, meaning they will exceed or meet the profit allocation, then the Board of Appeals has no obligation to grant the waivers. And Barbara and I would argue, why would they grant waivers? Because that's what town meeting has set in motion for 60 years since you first adopted zoning. So this becomes a very delicate, really, exercise for the Board of Appeals. And the one recommendation we'd make right from the beginning, and, and uh, town council and town manager and Barbara and I have spoken about this, is the Board of Appeals retaining experts right from the get-go using a statute that allows the developer to pay for the experts. It's Chapter 44, Section 53G. The Board of Selectmen can use these same experts. It's the developer that pays for it. It's the Board of Appeals who retains the individual, so there's no money going from the developer to the individuals. The Board and the town control the revenue, and the Board and, con and the town control the experts. We recommend that right from the beginning for any 40B project, let alone a complicated one such as the one that's now before the town. So the Board of Appeals is getting information on whether the waivers requested would render the project uneconomic from a financial advisor, from an accountant, from someone who has expertise in building construction and cost estimation. The Board now has expertise in wetland science, in hydrology, in hydrogeology, traffic, engineering, civil engineering, architectural design, landscape design. Because what's really at stake here is Arlington's master plan and your open space plan. What has been the point of developing all the plans you've developed in all the years that you've served and your predecessors before you if an applicant gets to throw them out the window under the rubric of affordable housing? That's not the way the statute works and that's not the way it's supposed to work. Towns that have pushed back have been successful. Towns that haven't, haven't been so successful because the developer's controlling the shots. Remember, this application is contra to your zoning. So now the developer, in our opinion, has to demonstrate why they need this contra to zoning proposal. So that's the process. The second piece to the process is what happens once the board renders a decision. There are very few comprehensive permits issued in the Commonwealth that haven't been appealed by the developer to the Housing Appeals Committee. So the appeal process has two tracks. The developer has an appeal to a state agency called the Housing <coughs> Appeals Committee, which is a, an agency within the Department of Housing and Community Development that has been no friend of cities and towns in the Commonwealth. <coughs> the abutter, or an abutter, someone who has standing, has an appeal of the board's decision to superior court. These are separate jurisdictions, and the two never cross. If an abutter takes an appeal of the board's decision, so an approval with conditions, to superior court, and the developer takes an appeal of the board's decision with conditions to the Housing Appeals Committee, the abutter's case is stayed, frozen, until the HAC matter and all appeals that flow from it are resolved. And that's why we have abutter appeals of 40B decisions that are three, four, five, six, seven, eight years old because the developer has been slogging through this administrative appeal process. So it's a very interesting dynamic and all of this is really important for the Board of Appeals to kind of get a grasp on right from the beginning. And I know they, they have and I know they will because it's really important to see the end process at the beginning. It's long, it's attenuated, and the Board really needs to get as much expertise as it can in all these disciplines relevant to the project early on. 
and they have the power to do it. So I, I guess, Mr. Chairman, the, the other thing I'd just add, and then, and then I'll stop, is the most important thing we've seen, and we just represent cities and towns and, and a butter groups, we don't represent the development community, is towns are not at the mercy of a rogue 40B application. We've seen that time and time again. Cities and towns, the rumor is, don't fight 40Bs, have to work with the applicant, and it's always better to work than fight. But the town has a lot of resiliency and a lot of power to push back on applications that don't meet what the town sees as its vision based on plans and logical engineering practice. So I say that as an optimistic note, not as it's not defeatist, all is not lost. 40B is a very difficult statute for cities and towns to work with, but cities and towns have been successful. And until the statute is reformed, cities and towns are going to have to take this one project at a time approach, and that's really what's right before you now front, front and center. Well, I'm sure a lot of us have questions. Are you? Are you? Uh, that was excellent. Thank you. So, uh, let me start, if you all don't mind. Let me ask. Um, I don't know how to say this properly, but what's your experience with eminent domain being used to stop a, a 40B? Could, did I say that? Is that a proper question? Or? So, eminent domain was used only once that I know of in a reported decision that went to the Supreme Judicial Court, uh, very unfavorably for the town of Burlington. Um, the SJC really punished the town for using eminent domain to stop a 40B project that was antagonistic to what the developer wanted. So it wasn't a friendly taking, the, the board's familiar and town meeting's familiar with so-called friendly takings. An unfriendly eminent domain taking is tough enough, as the board knows, and certainly uh, Doug w would opine. Uh, but when it involves 40B, it's perceived, or was perceived in this case, and could be perceived in future cases, as bad faith. So as a general principle, we would not recommend it. Uh, but of course, there's multiple levels of eminent domain. There's eminent domain by the Commonwealth that is not a function of municipal government. But our opinion would generally be, as a bird's eye view, uh, eminent domain and 40B don't mix. If an applicant is a proper applicant with a project eligibility letter, there's a lot of momentum going against the municipality. And again, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I defer to Doug on, on eminent domain advice completely, uh, but the standards of eminent domain still require the public purpose, the public use, and the good faith take. So that's a very generic response, Mr. Chairman, but, but I. No, no, my, my other question would be, are you recommending we hire specialists? We hire specialists at this point? So the issue has always been, can the Board of Selectmen use 53G money, require the applicant to provide consulting money? My opinion is you can. Whether the developer applicant will provide that without a fight is a different story. If the applicant has asked you to provide a review of a 200-page document containing detailed engineering, detailed hydrology, detailed economics, and the board doesn't have all of those expertise, no doubt you have some of them, but I doubt you have all of them, then it seems to me that when a state agency asks you to provide written comments that ostensibly they're going to take seriously, you should be able to provide the support or obtain the support. So I cannot tell you of any case where a Board of Selectmen have demanded 53G money from an applicant in a PE letter context, but our opinion is you have the right to ask for it. Thank you. Colleagues, Mr. Kiro. Thank you very much. I, I have uh, two questions. Um, the first is to that issue of uh, 53G. I was wondering, is there a statutory cap on the amount of, um, of funds that, that, that can be procured through 53G? No, great, great question. An applicant can appeal or challenge the use of 53G money only under two circumstances. One is that the consultant you seek to hire has a conflict of interest or the consultant you seek to hire is not qualified. And that appeal goes to the Board of Selectmen. So if, a, if the Conservation Commission requires 53G money from a developer, the developer can challenge that requirement to you. The Board of Selectmen are not precluded from 53G money. Boards of Selectmen throughout the Commonwealth issue special permits. They issue permits all the time. So <laughs> the answer, your short answer to your question, Mr. Kerr, is um, no, there's no cap. The statute does not reference a cap. It's a reasonableness test is what we would advise. Okay, thank you. And my other question concerns 
Um, a butter appeals. You, you mentioned a butter appeals to the Superior Court. I know that we, we had an infamous redevelopment project here where there were two separate of butter appeals were filed. One went to the Superior Court, but one went to another jurisdiction. I, I want to say land court. I'm not sure where. And I was wondering if that is, um, is the same in this situation. No. Uh, no. Excellent question. No, they're different. So land court and Superior Court are both trial courts within the Commonwealth. So in a butter under 40B can appeal to the Superior Court or land court okay. under, under the statute that provides either, but they're both considered the trial court. The developer appeals to an administrative agency called the Housing Appeals Committee. No, I understand. My question is, though, if you have two separate abutters who file two separate appeals, they can, they can file in two separate jurisdictions. They, they can. Which so makes it all very. So common. if I'm in a butter, I'll file in Superior Court. Barbara, she's in the butter, she'll file in Land Court. Doug's the developer, he'll ask the court to consolidate the two. Okay. So Doug won't have to fight us in two different forms. But yes, it's entirely possible that a butter A goes left and a butter B goes right, and it's up to the developer to force the consolidation. Okay. But most courts will allow that consolidation. Um, in fact, it happens quite routinely that when one goes to Superior and one goes to Land Court, the developer will consolidate to go to Land Court. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yes, Ms. Mahan. Um, I'm definitely appreciating my role and what the limits are um, in terms of how active a role I can participate in as a member of the Board of Selectmen. And I, I did speak briefly with Attorney Whitten, and I've spoken with Attorney Heim and um, the town manager and the chairman that um, for sort of the deep core questions that I have with my limited um, legal background as well as political, um, I'll direct those through the chairman um, to go to the town manager, Attorney Heim or, and or Attorney Whitten. So I'll just ask two sort of clarification procedural questions. Um, there were four areas at the hearing that Oak Tree had that they cited um, basically the same language, and of course all this will be subject to peer reviewers. I'm assuming that, if I'm correct, that that citation is what you're talking about for outside consultants under, I think you said chapter 4453G? So the, if the developer made that statement, that's their presumption that the town will have review authority and that the town will send out the project for review. It's not a presumption that the developer is conceding 53G. Okay. It's just, that's my sense, thinking about that kind of response. Mm -hmm. They assume that, particularly in an area of great stormwater and, mm -hmm. and hydraulic issues, that it's gonna go out for outside peer review or to the town's engineering consultant. Whether they're, they're conceding they have to pay for it is, is a different question. And my question would be, and hopefully it's done tomorrow, um, if the town had an, an unofficial uh, transcript of the meeting um, where they made statements, and I'm just going by my memory, they said flooding, traffic, um, lighting, dark, dark sky regulations, and I believe the fourth was um, construction mm. impacts in terms of pilings and borings and things like that. Would that be something that would be suitable to submit um, in terms of making our case for why the board um, needs a specialized consultant. And my second question to that would be, I know it says in Mass Housing's letter that um, I think it's the Zoning Board of Appeals under their assistance program under Chapter 40B, they can get up to $10,000 in a consultant. My question is, What's the difference between the two? Does one offset the other? I'm just curious what that is. So Mass I believe that's only, I apologize, I just wanna make sure my understanding, that 40B something assistance program is only available to the ZBA. So the latter part is absolutely correct. Okay. It's $10,000, it's the Mass Housing Partnership Technical Assistance Program. That $10,000 is available to cities and towns to use a pool of consultants that Mass Housing and MHP have approved. Uh, what I'd say, uh, quite candidly, is some of those consultants I think you'd find very good and credible. Others of those consultants are uh, really a arm of the 40B industry, and we would recommend you stay away from them. Um, and that's um, just being quite candid with mm -hmm. the board. I, I would not feel comfortable, you hired us for a reason, I would not feel comfortable working with the Board of Appeals with many of the consultants in that pool. Um, they're not here to help you, they're here to get the project approved. 
And that may be what happens, and that may be the best thing for Arlington, but I don't think you should start with a consultant using state money that has already a built-in bias towards the outcome. Uh, that money is available to the Board of Appeals if they choose to take it. There's no obligation. And if they take it, they should be able to determine who they get. It shouldn't be an assigned entity. That money is completely separate from the 53G money. And I can tell you based on, I was one of those reviewers 15 years ago, um, and that didn't last long because I was providing advice that the Board of Appeals benefited from, I think, and it wasn't to the liking of Mass Housing Partnership. That expertise is typically not in the sciences or in the engineering field. It's in programmatic issues, it's helping in getting to yes, and frankly, I'm not sure, having met your Board of Appeals, that that's the kind of advice they need. I think they're quite capable of getting to yes. I think what they need, like any board needs, would be added technical advice and support. Um, so that was a long-winded answer. That, that $10,000 is separate from the 53G. Okay, and then just two kind of quick ones. Um, I'm going to assume that in terms of, um, I know in terms of any expertise that um, the board may seek to retain the chairman and town manager would oversee that and present that. Um, I just would leave it to the chairman if there's anything that the chairman and town manager need to do to offer that assistance to, assistance to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, to the Board of Health and or Conservation Commission in the future. I'll leave it to the chairman when he's notified by the appropriate um, either attorney or town manager that, that we need to do that. So I'm not going to go into all of those sorts of questions, just leave it in your lap. And then the third one is perhaps a relatively easy one. I understand we have the 30 days, we're requesting an extra 60 to make it 90. I see that there's a meeting scheduled for June 23rd, I think at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, my question is twofold. If they grant that 90-day um, extension, does that meeting change? Or is that meeting going to happen no matter what on June 23rd? Probably, unless you ask for a change, to, change of date. If that date doesn't work for the board or for others that you want to have attend with you, you can always petition for a new day. That's not fixed in stone, but I think if you don't ask for a change, you, you should assume that would be the date. And, and perhaps I don't get the answer to this tonight, or the board doesn't, unless it's I'm overthinking like I normally do. Um, I would anticipate that. I know I would be interested in going. Um, I could see possibly at least a quorum of us going, which means we would have to post it. Um, um, well, I guess I would ask the question, do we, would we have to post that as a public meeting or would we have to ensure that we engage in no conversations with each other? I just want to cover ourselves in terms of past experience. Yeah, site visit. And then my, my last question would be, is there a risk or benefit for that? So again, I always uh, defer to town council. Our opinion is site visits do not have to be posted in an abundance of caution. Many towns do post them and there's nothing wrong with that. So, so you'll see in the letter that they invite boards and bodies mm -hmm. because it's not, it's really the state's business is the way I would interpret. It's, mm -hmm. You're not actually making a decision on anything, you're just accompanying on a site visit. A quorum of you were there as long as you didn't discuss other public business we could take certain precautions but I wouldn't I wouldn't have qualms about it. okay and, and I guess I would leave that to the chairman that if anybody from the legal side and the town manager side team um, I would certainly like to go but I don't want to do anything that um, affects the case negatively um, I don't know is there can you say m more often than not um, Boards of Selectmen, City Council do go to these sites visits, or more often than not, they don't? No, no I was uh, on the Board of Selectmen in my town in Duxbury, and um, no, no, we go to site visits, and okay. most boards do if you can. You're, you've got busy schedules, and it's in the middle of the day, so if you can. Um, no, I, I would urge you, be, in, in part because you're going to provide them with some comments that are going to be detailed and vigorous and robust, and you have personal knowledge. So. I, it's not fatal if you don't attend because mm -hmm. you, you still know the site, but if you can attend, because the other thing about attending a site visit is you'll, you'll be with the applicant. The, their agent will be there, and you can ask questions in terms of, you know, what's that resource or where's that resource boundary or what's that, and that's often helpful if you haven't had the opportunity to, to walk on the site because it's been private property. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry, I didn't mean to take some time. Mr. Byrne, any questions? Um, Yes, I do. Sorry, I just um, dropped my pen there, so I'm trying to get a new one working. <laughs> uh -huh. Thanks, Diane. 
Um, so, sorry, I'm trying to get my notes in order. Um, the first, I guess, would be, you know, I, I understand the political, not regulatory capital. What, what, how does the relationship, you know, say from now moving forward between the Board of Selectmen and the ZBA kind of play out? You know, where they're appointing authority, where, where does that kind of relationship begin and end? So there's, I can't give you a good answer to that because every town's rela political relationship with its appointed members is different. Um, I can say that you're the chief elected officials and most importantly from the developer's perspective, you control the legal budget. You control the legal budget. So a developer coming into a town has to ask his or her counsel, what's the odds of litigation in this case? And if we end up litigating, how vigorous is the town gonna fight? And that's almost always answered by the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an important consideration. Boards of Selectmen who are engaged in a particular fight, the developer knows that, and the developer has to do the calculus. Uh, other than that, frankly, it's an all above board process. The Board of Appeals will never deliberate uh, behind closed doors as long as I know Doug and, and we are involved. And uh, I had the opportunity to meet the Board of Appeals, they wouldn't do it anyways. Um, so the Board of Selectmen can attend these meetings, the Board of Selectmen can speak on behalf of individuals or on the behalf of the Board, and the Board of Appeals will listen to you uh, because your overarching authority is bigger picture, the Board of Appeals sits as an adjudicative body. It's narrow, not narrow-minded, but narrow in scope. They're focused on this one parcel. You're thinking about the entire town. So they will listen to you. Your role is important at the public hearings. Your role is important in the advocacy. I think your role is hugely important in terms of the legislative delegation. We have seen mass housing listen to the senators and the reps from cities and towns. It's a political agency. We have seen them listen. So I think that's very important. And I think your connection to the other boards and committees in towns is very important. So it's very specific to your relationship with your appointed members, but I, I, think, it's, I think it's important. I think it's very important. Thank you. No, that I'm um, very clarifying. Um, so, and I appreciate your kindness on everything else. Are we, would, are we more probably going to get this extension on the common period? Um, on what you're Doug, seeing Doug, Doug and I were kicking around. I, I, I think mass housing would be hard pressed to not say 60. It would be insulting. It's in the middle of the summer. You got a 200 page application that in six minutes we determined is already incorrect. So one would think that mass housing would have the courtesy to the Board of Selectmen. Um, and if they say no, then we'll help you respond in 30 days. Uh, that would be unfortunate. But again, I, I think the political connections here are very important. Ma mass housing is um, um, not agnostic. They, they listen to others. Thank you. And um, I guess just, just a couple comments. Um, I, I, I really like the 53G um, idea. I think that's something we should um, definitely uh, utilize moving forward. And I think we also have to keep an eye on the staff of the zoning board um, now, particularly, and, and you know, um, consider after weighing, um, you know, the workloads maybe expand or you know clarify that role a bit more um, as we move forward through this process. But um, other than that, I, I really appreciate you being here and um, you. your uh, helpfulness tonight. And uh, I know. You've done quite a bit of work on this, and also um, all the town members. I know um, you, you've been showing up in droves on this issue, so I'm, I'm very grateful for that as well, and I think we hear everyone loud and clear. So thank you. Yes, Mr. Dunn. Um, I just have one question, and I think it actually may end up being more for Adam and Doug. Um, sorry, sorry, Doug. Uh, so it, it, I got to the same place as Steve, and that is, uh, do we have everything we need like does the town does the does our the, do we as a town are we are we ready for this conversation and this process and uh, all of this is there anything we should or is there something the board of selectmen should be doing to make it easier for you uh i i would say we are ready um uh, doug has really taken the lead in working with attorney Witten and attorney huggins uh carol kowalski director of planning is here has been taking that lead as well director of inspectional services uh, also included in that mix uh i, I think we're ready uh, we still do have to determine, uh, with Attorney Witten's advice, whether or not uh, at this Board of Selectmen stage we, w we want to use that 53G uh, for consultants or if we want to wait till the uh, Board of Appeals stage. Uh, but we already have names of consultants. We are prepared 
uh, to uh, execute agreements with consultants. So I, I, I think we're ready. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Though. Yeah, the only thing I'd like to add is, is that um, Attorney Whitten and Attorney Huggins have also been working with the ZBA to make sure the ZBA is ready. And that's, in my mind, in many ways the most critical piece here. So um, among, you know, along with Carol and Adam and a lot of other folks who've been working on this from the town side, the ZBA has been working with uh, Mr. Whitten and, and Ms. Huggins to make sure that they're primed in every way to have the resources that they need, to have the procedures in place to evaluate uh, this application when it comes um, under the fairest terms, um, but also with the input of all the folks um, who I think want to contribute and make their voices heard on this particular project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So uh, let's focus on what we need to do tonight is we need a motion for us to send the letter to the executive director of Mass Housing uh, requesting the extension uh, from 30 to 90 days. So moved. So second. Moved. Second. Further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, yep. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you. Thank you. thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah, no. No, sorry. It's not a hearing on you, Gar. And unless you want to comment on. Uh, what do you want to. Question is over now, man. All right, John, go ahead. I bet it's on 40B. Of course, you knew once you had 40B on your agenda tonight, had show up, right? Uh, Thank you. Wait, wait. Uh, we're going to at least need Doug, maybe, no? Uh, yeah. Just can you wait for a moment? I, I, I'm not sure whether this is a question or what, but just in case. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my question is specific to our 1.5. We've got to tighten that number up. I say we're over the 1.5. We've had some differences. We really have to sit down and go through the records. I mean, I've gone all the way to the Registry of Deeds with this. I wouldn't say we're at 1.5 if we weren't. And I still see some voids in there that we can fix to make sure we're well above okay. the 1.5. You got the right counsel here, I'll tell you. Uh, matter of fact, I think he's the guy that nominated me to chair the coalition to reform 40B <laughs> 15 years ago. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, you've got the right person here. Take his advice. Follow it, please. And I got to talk to you folks because we really have to tighten up that. That 1.5 is the ace in the hole. Uh, yeah. Okay, Mr. Hine. John, I just wanted to. This is something that uh, the town's personnel is dedicated to spending a lot of time and energy making sure that we've got that calculation right. And if you have data or information that you think would be useful, Certainly welcome it and make We've sure that the right people get it. sit down go through it because I do have some thoughts about some of it. And my favorite expression I use when I go to a lot of other towns doing 40B stuff is an expression that John gave on a panel we appeared on. Had to be 12, 13 years ago. And he said this law could only exist in countries like Korea, China, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. It's crazy. And he's the hottest working guy you're going to find to work on it. Great, thank but you. But we, we got work to do. Okay, thank you. Quick, Elsie, why then? Excuse me. I've been sitting too long. Elsie Fiore. Uh, I'm in immediate butter uh, to the MUGAR site, as most of you probably know. Uh, the last time they had a project, I sued myself. I'm not an attorney, but I did all my own work and everything and filed a suit. But my, uh, so what I'm concerned about now are the, pe the rest of the people who are not here tonight. Not, my son Peter left me a note and said it's not for people to get up and speak, and I understand that. But when do we have a chance to get up and speak, say, before the selectmen, or even with Mr. Witten in uh, yes. place or something? Yeah, the but people, uh, at least a certain number of people, need to be able to be in a more official place yes. here. Right. But tonight was for us to meet. Our yes, Mr. I understand Witten that. And and to discuss this. See, you know, now finally something's been filed, 
Right. And that's why we're starting the process. Mm -hmm. You can be assured we will be talking about this numerous times and that there will be ample opportunity to speak on it. As you know, there's already been a public hearing at the Hardy School on it. I assume right. you were there, were you? Yes, I was. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. so, but certainly in front of the selectmen, there will be other opportunities. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank All you. Right. It's fine, thank you. Okay. Thank All right. Sorry, I, I didn't, I, excuse me for holding you up. Uh, so, uh, to that end, item number 13. Uh, uh, for example, June 23rd, I'm going to be out of town. So, uh, with this board's permission, what I'd like to do is appoint uh, the vice chairman, uh, Ms. Mahan, as our liaison uh, on this MUGAR project. I will be there whenever possible, as each of you will be. But, for example, on June 23rd, I cannot uh, be there. So, uh, here, if there's no objection from the board. So moved. Okay. Second. So moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And uh, as a did, did, have you finished your, you, you did um, the comments from the Hardy? Yes. Um, How many pages? Um, it was only like 120, but it's all straight text. It's not q and A. <laughs> I would like the, what's that version called? The manuscript, the word <laughs> the, executive, yeah. the executive um, summary. Just to that end, um, and I, I talked to Adam and D Attorney Heim, what I'm going to do is provide the two PDF files to um, either the town manager or town council and have them send you the direct email with the links and the explanation of what the bigger one is and the smaller one just so that I know I'm overthinking it but that you know I'm not <coughs> communicating or anything like that so um, I'm going to provide it to the town manager and then he'll forward it on to whomever. Did you really say only 120 pages? I'm doing it from my head. Mr. Yeah, I'm, Mr. I'm Chairman, yes. what was the June 23rd meeting again? I'm sorry. That's the site visit, the site at, visit uh, at, I believe, uh, at the at Muga, Muga property. Site. 10 with Mass Housing. Okay. When the developer will be there along with Mass Housing. All right. Uh, I just, I'm in New York on business, I know, so. Okay. But, did, and when did, it, did that, when did that date come in? I just, uh, I want to make sure. It's at 10 a.m. It's in the letter. Today. On the desk today. Uh, it, it was just received via email yep. today. Last paragraph on the bottom of page one. Page one, sorry. Yes, yeah, I come, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right, item 14, Mr. Byrne. Oh, thank you, Mr. Grayley. Um, you know, it's um, a bit of discussion tonight, so I'll, I'll be brief, but I do just want to thank the Public Memorials Committee for uh, making this recommendation. Also want to thank the Babe Ruth Board of Directors for um, really doing quite a bit of work over the past year, um, not only on um, this renaming, but also on, on really bringing the field um, up at Summer Street um, up to par um, with a lot of other facilities in the area. Um, I, I know I've mentioned it before, but I had the opportunity to play for Jim Robillard um, for a few summers back when I was younger on the Arlington Potterats. And, um, you know, I, I still this day, my friends and I, I, I guess a little background. So there are two teams from Arlington, um, and the Arlington Ponderats and the Arlington Cardinals. So half my friends were on the Ponderats and the other half were on the Cardinals. And we still have debates to this day about, you know, who was better and, you know, why the Ponderats were and are still a better program. Um, and so, and I think a lot of that had to do with uh, Jim Robillard and, and the amount of time he dedicated to us. He, he was down there all the time. And, you know, you talk to generations um, of, of people who played ball in town and they've all, you know, have a story about him. And um, I, I think it really is a uh, worthy dedication and I hope you'll join me in supporting it. Second. Discussion. Yes, Mr. Carroll. I'm very happy to support this. And I also wonder, do we, have to ask the Park and Rec Commission also to to join us in this, or, or not? I, I didn't think so. No, but okay. no. I believe they have already or do plan to take a vote, but we can certainly okay. coordinate. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess I didn't mention it, but so we've been in talks with the Board of Directors for Babe Ruth, and uh, they've been in touch with Parks and Rec throughout okay. the whole process as well. Excuse me, um, I did ask Joe Gunn if he had yeah. a comment from the park, and he said no, he didn't. As long as the selectmen approved it, they didn't have to. They fully supported it. Right. <coughs> yeah, Ms. Mahan. Um, 
I just want to thank Mr. Byrne for doing this. And, um, I wish I could say I, I had the experience or my son had the experience <laughs> for playing on the pond rats, but um, I didn't. Um, I do want to just pass along. I spoke with Jim on Thursday. Um, he is so appreciative of, you know, not so much the naming of the field, but the uh, amount of people that have come out, like Mr. Byrne, and um, to say such kind things about him with his current situation. I, he was very appreciative. I relayed um, over the phone the email remarks from uh, Joe Conley and from you, Mr. Manager, Adam Chapdelaine. And that was as big as a testimonial as, as everything else. Um, he's, he's very appreciative of that. He wanted to say to the board, he's very grateful um, for serving on Park and Rec Commission. That was truly something that he wanted to do for so long. And when that became a reality, um, he was very excited about that and, and really went 150 percent, you know, similar to what he did to get lights up on the Bay Booth field and things like that. Um, he said maybe it was a blessing he was not reelected to town meeting um, in light of because um, he would have had to resign from that position also because he felt very strongly um, with working with the town manager and Joe Conley by resigning his seat and getting somewhere in there right away because he truly does feel um, the importance of the um, actions before the, the Park and Rec Commission and he doesn't want any lull or drag in that which um, I think we all commend him on thinking in this current time. And he did say to me, you know, his goal is, uh, you know, the Robots have a big family vacation thing sometime in August. <laughs> and uh, as well as, I think, and I may be mistaken, but I thought I might have had a conversation either with um, the town manager or Joe Conley about um, doing something in August sort of as a preliminary recognition that hopefully Jim, whether it's at a park and rec meeting or whether it's actually something on the site. But that, I'm going to leave that to Joe, Joe and the town manager to let us know about that. But he really wanted, when I spoke to him on Thursday, I'll, I'll talk to him again tomorrow, he really, you know, I won't say get, got choked up. He said it was, he, had, he was eating his lunch. He wasn't choking up over the phone, but I thought he was. So thank you. So I, I was unclear. Do you want us to hold something while his family is here on vacation? Is that what no, you're no, no. I, I'm going to no, no. I'm going to no, no. That's a separate thing. I'm saying his goal is, despite what he may be being told, that he's going to be out of hospital rehab, hopefully, and be around in August for a little while, okay. um, if not longer. I, I did forget to mention that the the board of directors for Baby Ruth has been very active. Um, they have a Facebook page already. They're already um, getting. Um, you know, former players trying to recruit a bunch of people to have some sort of um, ceremony as, when the time comes. So keep your eyes out for that, and I'll, um, I'll try to follow that as well. Okay. So that's a motion by you, Mr. Burns, Yes, correct? please. Seconded by Ms. Mahan. Further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Glad to do it for Mr. Robillard. Um, I Number 15, uh, for approval, site of the Robert McMurray Memorial, um, Adam and I think Dan right as well on this uh, so uh, thank you mr. chairman so this is uh, an item that both the Public Memorials Committee and the Board of Selectmen had favorably acted on in the past however this is the specific site where they want to locate the memorial and a, a, a draft of what they'd like the memorial to look like so attached for the board's review tonight uh, is a, a map uh, put together by the Arlington Bicycle Club you can see it's right off the bike path near the Ed Burns Arena uh, and actually near what's soon to be the uh, James Robillard Field, a uh, small asphalt area uh, with, with a bench, uh, and you can see where they'd like to put the proposed memorial location. Uh, uh, I've taken a look at it. Mike Rademacher's taken a look, and Joe Connolly had as well, has as well. Not that there's immediate parks and rec jurisdiction, but a proximity, uh, and all parties are comfortable with the location. So with the board's final approval, uh, we'll give them the go-ahead to locate uh, the Bobby Mack Memorial in this site. Delighted. That's your motion. Uh, yes, move support. Second? Second. Further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Unanimous. So now we go to the appointment of our CPAC screening committee members and the position posting. Um, if you have not had a chance in terms of to read the position uh, posting, which um, Adam has made available to us. But at this point, I would like to ask, as you know, each of you are to appoint one member to a screening committee. Um, it is our goal, if we approve this position posting, 
to maybe accept applications up to July 12th. Uh, July 10th. July 10th. Before that, Adam and I would meet with the screening committee to kind of discuss process. None of us know how many applications we're going to uh, receive. And after that screening committee, how many they would pass on to Adam and I to final interview to then pass on four or so to this board for the actual appointment. Our goal is for them to first to be appointed by the first meeting in September? Correct. Right. And then they would start to meet from that point forward. So, a, yes. Yep, and please. I apologize if you, I've already been told this, so I'm not gleaning it from here. Um, just procedurally, I see that we're going to have staggered terms for right. the committee members, and I'm just not remembering who ultimately or what entity ultimately will determine who is the one year seat, who is the two year seat, who is the three year seat. Well, we, what we're recommending is that we appoint of the four. We appoint one for one year, two for two years, and one for three years. And who is the we that does the appointment? We, the board of selectmen. And I, I would imagine that the chairman and I would make the recommendation of how those terms okay. be staggered, subject to the approval of the board okay. of selectmen. Okay, I just, I just wanted to check, that's it, all. It, all right. If I may, Mr. Chairman, b before the, the board um, has any co uh, conversation or discussion around this solicitation, I, I want to make very clear uh, that we did a little research on what some other communities have done, and we found uh, almost entirely this solicitation in Somerville, and I found it so excellent that I tweaked it and made it more, a little bit more appropriate for Arlington and felt like it was great. And, and, I, and I hope, you know, any comments, you know, we'll, we'll obviously tweak it, but I just want to make sure that attribution is out there. So tweaked, right not plagiarized. You tweaked. <laughs> Wait, this is not an academic. This, is not, this is not an academic journal. <laughs> it's a public Fair record, sir. <laughs> Since he just clearly attributed it to Somerville, he's not plagiarizing, and he did do some tweaking, I'm sure. So Jason, let's start with your appointments, uh, Mr. Byrne. Um, sure, I am happy to appoint um, Michael Baker of Chester Street. He's a um, new to town meeting. Um, I, I think he'll represent, uh, and I don't know who. Obviously, everyone else has chosen, but but I would have to assume he's a, a bit younger than everyone else's choices. Um, he graduated from Arlington High School in. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, he graduated from Arlington High in 2007, I believe. Went on to UMass Amherst. He's actually about to begin law school at uh, Suffolk. Um, he also works in the state house as as a district director, and uh, he does quite a lot of work with housing and community development. And I think um, he really has the enthusiasm and, um, for this role, and I, I think he looks forward to it very much. Thank you very much. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I will be appointing no stranger, um, George Late, um, who has served in different capacities. He's certainly well versed um, with the Community Preservation Act and, and Chapter 40B, as well as his previous experience in the State House. Um, I checked with him first to make sure that he wasn't going to apply for the committee, which I was thinking maybe he would, but um, no, he's uh, definitely willing in terms of his time load and union activities that um, he can commit to this screening process and looks forward to it. Great, thank you. Mr. Caro. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to appoint um, Tom Michaelman of uh, Everett Street. He's also a new town meeting member. He's actually a, a new uh, resident to the town uh, who had quite a bit of experience with the uh, CPA in, um, I believe it was in Acton. He works in the field of uh, alternative energy, and um, I think he'll be a great, um, great new voice and pair of eyes. Mr. Dunn. Brian Rarick, uh, an advocate of the CPA and someone who's well connected to review and check out a lot of names and people as we create our first CPA committee. Okay. And uh, my appointment, uh, uh, and to chair this, the steering committee is Mr. Charlie Foskett. Uh, also not interested, I mean, he is interested in serving, but he feels he's uh, trying to serve on CPAC because he's, uh, he's uh, part of the finance committee and capital planning. He can't, but he'd be honored to chair this. So, Marie, do you have, do, uh, Adam, do you have enough names and addresses there in terms of? Yeah, so you and and if I, I need contacts, I can. Right. Ask so next, uh, any further discussion on that? Thank you all for doing your, you're doing a great job as always. Uh, any, any uh, discussion on the uh, position posting? Any, any tweaking we might like to do to it? 
I'll, I'll I think go. you've tweaked Mr. Chapter. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> not, not so much on the posting, but the um, process going forward, and I don't need an answer to that tonight, but I see that one of the suggested criteria, criteria on whatever, um, is to familiarize yourself with Chapter 44B. And I'd just be um, interested in when the chairman and town manager do move forward with the interviews, um, how you're, I, I'd be interested in how you're going to sort of glean, you know, what prompts you'll use and what you're expecting to hear back in terms of, is it a, a question that's gonna be posed, yes, I read it, I know it, or if it's gonna be, I'm assuming it might be something a little more in depth. So I think we would ask someone to describe their interest in knowledge of Chapter 44B, and okay. then based on their answer, see what depth of knowledge they actually have about the statute. Okay, that was the only thing. Thank you. But to that end, I welcome from any of my colleagues any questions you would like asked. Uh, and indeed, I support you having a, an opportunity to ask whatever questions you would like of these candidates before final approval. Mr. Dunn. Third paragraph, fourth line, selectman and town manager are. Third paragraph, fourth line. Ah, wow, nice catch. Oh, yeah. For this, for, for I'm currently looking to fill the floor. That must have came from Somerville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's there. Yeah, must have had so much already there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Kiro. Um, I was just wondering if we, uh, if it would be advisable to state somewhere here um, that this does not actually come into effect un until the Attorney General has approved the action of town meeting so that applicants <laughs> understand Excuse that. me. So, yeah, I, well, go ahead. So, sure, no, no, please. So, yeah, I mean, we, we could definitely put a put a line in that the actual appointments won't be made until that point in time. But in terms we of reference the, town meetings action, but we right. don't reference yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's not. You know. Yeah, I'm a, it just, I, I just don't feel the need to, personally, I don't feel the need to worry about that for this purpose. You know, the worst case scenario is that the, that the, uh, Town, the Attorney General rejects our, our, our item, in which case we can't actually appoint these people, in which case disappointing them will be the least of our concerns. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying if, you know, they probably don't want to be sworn in until after we've had all, everything. Yeah. I'm. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Maybe it's picked to you. No, I, I mean, I agree. We've talked about that all along, that that needs to be understood by candidates, but we just don't have any doubt that this is going to be improved, approved since it has been in so many other right. communities. Right. What if I added in parens, Mr. Chairman, excuse me, uh, second paragraph, one, two, three, four, fifth line, uh, after meeting, subject to uh, Attorney General approval or, or, or something of that nature. Well, that the term will begin, the, the term to begin once. Well, so I already say that the final approval is expected to occur at the board's meeting, uh, first meeting in September. Yeah. So it's already stated when it's going to happen. Okay. Not to worry about it. Okay. Anything else, then? Nope. All right. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you all for your work. And now for discussion, a master plan implementation committee. Is that Adam or Carol? Oh, I thanks. thought I, I saw Carol. John? I approve of it because I've had a thought by mind knowing uh, you're going to have a screening committee, and you people placed some real valuable people on the screening committee. The thought that crosses my mind is CPC is going to involve the entire town. Uh, the board that the screening committee appoints, I would like to see it diversified so that there is representation in all sections of the town. Because, you know, as, as you all know, the CPC was pretty much driven down this end. You didn't hear too much from up on my end because people said, oh, what's the CPC? But I'm saying, you know, somewhere along the way, you're going to get involvement <coughs> And you really should have representation cross-section. We're only five square miles. We ought to be able to get a committee right. that's got a piece. John, you know there's nine appointments in total. We're just talking about the four at large. But yes, I hear you. That that would be something, just something I'd like I would to be see. interested in. What's the geographic disbursement of these people? And I can put my application no. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yes. Uh, in the uh, solicitation document that the board just approved, 
uh, under the section that says, in addition, the goal of the Board of Selectmen is to create a balanced committee that includes members who come from diverse demographic backgrounds and represent all geographic areas of the town. So the, the Board's making a stated commitment to that goal. That didn't come from Somerville. That definitely yeah, I, I remember, I think I remember saying to myself, Mr. Gray. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, who, who wants to speak about the uh, master plan? I, I, I'll take a shot and then happily uh, turn to Carol for any um, uh, further information she wants to provide. So. Uh, <coughs> A lot of great work uh, done in informing the master plan, years of great work informing the master plan, but perhaps the most important work is actually implementing the master plan. Uh, so to oversee that, uh, the Redevelopment Board, uh, at the recommendation of Carol Kowalski, Director of Planning and Community Development, uh, are moving forward with forming uh, what's before you, the Master Plan Implementation Committee. Uh, I wanted to advise you of this, uh, inform you about it. Uh, you can see the description that's before you and also let you know uh, that the appointment of two at-large members, um, much like a number of appointments in town, will be uh, recommendations that I make to the board for approval uh, for service on the committee. Uh, so you can see we have a cross-section of uh, both uh, town employees, myself and the Director of Inspectional Services, someone from the Redevelopment Board, uh, some conti uh, continuity coming over from the Master Plan Advisory Committee, uh, from our legislative body town meeting as well as uh, connections to the finance committee and CPA. So we think we've got a pretty well-rounded uh, committee formation here. Uh, not gonna be a committee that meets uh, extremely regularly, uh, most likely quarterly. Uh, we'll report to the ARB and the Board of Selectmen annually on um, progress made in um, meeting the, uh, the implementation plan and the goals of the master plan. So, uh, and also not, not a forever committee. Uh, the, the goal would be to have this committee live for five years and, and then if it's useful life is still uh, you know, looking to be uh, needed, uh, extended for another five years, but not something that we see going on in perpetuity, but actually working to see that the master plan is implemented. Mm -hmm. So not even necessarily asking for board's action tonight, but wanted to make the board uh, aware of this in open session, uh, get any feedback you had and um, basically go from there. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I've approved, I am delighted to support the creation of this committee and its mission. I, it's a, I'm wondering just if there's anything we should think about bylaw-wise about whether or not it's a committee of the ARB or a committee of the selectmen or a committee of town meeting, or which obviously is problematic if a town meeting isn't in session. But uh, is there any sense of like where we, this would come from? or? I think so. Or, my sense would be this is a committee of the ARB, be, okay. being the planning board. Yep. I think that's I think that's probably the right answer too. Maybe I just didn't read it as clearly. But yeah, it maybe might be maybe worse. that should be the first line. Actually, is I think it's a good a good suggestion. What's the difference between four and five? There is no difference, right? So it just should be two, two. ARB two appointees, yeah. right? Correct. Yep. All right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Miss Mahoney. Just sort of an inherent question, but we, um, I see that you, you have in here that the DPW director, Mr. Rademacher, will not serve on the committee as an acting committee member, but will be available um, to the committee quarterly, et cetera. Um, am I correct to assume, or do you feel that Mr. Rademacher is able to wear all hats? I know we had the newly recently created facilities director position. Um, is it, do you see that person, he or she, interfacing with this committee, or do you think Mr. Rademacher will be the appropriate person? Uh, I do see the facilities director interfacing with this committee. Okay. So that's covered under DPW director yeah, will you, report, but when he or you designate that facilities director needs to be available, that's the mechanism. It doesn't need to be stated. Yeah, you know, so we, we, sort of, we had an internal debate about whether or not the DPW director should actually be on the committee. Mm -hmm. And where we came down on it is that there's not necessarily um, enough direct impact on things that the DPW director is responsible for. There's certainly a lot, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, DPW director doesn't really get involved in zoning and a lot of the, the longer term uh, goals for zoning and, and visioning for build out of the, the public and private part of the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, so moving on from there, there's certainly a facilities section. So I, I guess we didn't feel like calling it out was absolutely necessary. But I, no, I, you don't have to call it out. I just and I, to I don't think any of this should be considered to be exclusionary. Okay. You, you know, should Health and Human Services Director or, or, or any other director, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, need to be called upon for their guidance or input, we'd certainly do that. Now, I only ask where it's a new position. I want to make sure I'm not clarifying it in my head as a different position. It just seems like a natural fit that that person may yeah, interface I think there, there at some will be point. A role. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. 
Okay, so you don't need any action from us. I, 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 whatever, whatever action the board would, would move feel receipt. Taking. Actually, I have a question. Oh, sorry, Mr. Sir, um, when is this going to be up and running, Adam? So we're going to get it posted uh, this week, right, Carol? Uh, so the, the only member that would sort of lag is the CPA committee member. Okay. So once that CPA committee is appointed, then so they'll have to then designate someone to serve on this committee. Uh, one, one busy person. Yeah, yeah I would assume so. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, who moved the receipt, Diane? And seconded? Second. Second. Yes. Further discussion? Carol, you're happy back there? Nothing? I'm very happy. Clap your hands. You should, you should be. You did, you've done a great job. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. <coughs> uh, item number 18. Mr. Uh, Chapter Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is an item uh, where I'm asking uh, the approval of the Board of Selectmen to provide uh, uh, tuition for me to attend a, a, a course this summer at Harvard on Executive Education for Sustainability Leadership. Uh, it's a course actually that our energy manager attended last year uh, and highly recommended to me. And as I outlined in my memo to the board, I, I think the board knows of my very sincere and passionate interest about sustainability issues. Uh, and, and I think this uh, course would be a great opportunity for me, but also an opportunity for me to bring back, uh, you know, what, what I can learn there to this organization to sort of, uh, not to sort of, to expand the sustainability uh, initiatives that we have within the organization. So I respectfully request the board's consideration. Move approval. Move approval. Second. <coughs> should we should we ask for a presentation from him afterwards? Oh, I'd be happy, happy to. Happy to. <laughs> Can you direct that, Steve? <laughs> that's something that you're a little bit familiar with recently. I'll do my yeah. best. Okay, uh, so moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say the by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Good for you and good for Allen tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, correspondence received. Receipt. Move received. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor, please say the by saying aye. Aye. All aye. opposed. Yeah. New business. Marie. Nothing to add. God bless you. Except for everybody knows for the. Arlington Alive, we need uh, food for nuts, which I'll talk to Mr. Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can yep. go to another. You yep. need food, what? Permits. Permits. Oh, 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 right yes, sir. Okay, yep, yep. Um, and Marie, we don't have a July date, do we yet, for the board? Do we set dates for we July did. and August? We did, I thought we did. I, don't, I we think did. it's. Yeah. Oh, it, we did? Okay, if yeah. we did, I just didn't put it in. I think it's the 19th. Okay. It's the 19th, and so does that sound uh, good? It is the, I 18? believe it's the 13th. Let me check there. July 13th? 13th, July 13th, 13th okay. yeah. Didn't you just sign up for that course that week? 7 to 7 10. through 10. Oh, 7 to 10, all right. Yeah. Well, so Come you on. Only have a few See, days. I know <laughs> the days. We're going to report together. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, but we've got two meetings before that. We've got June 27, yeah. first, which is a Saturday. Right. Our goal setting we'll meeting. And we've, got oh, June and we've got June 29. No, I understand. Okay. I know the June meetings. I, I, okay. I, I wasn't sure about the uh, got it. July. Okay. okay. All right, Mr. Heim, new business. I just want to note that as um, the process continues with respect to 40B issues, I'll make sure to keep the chairman and members of the board advised of development so that we can determine whether or not anything needs to be addressed in the scheduling <coughs> confines of the summer schedule. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chaplain. Are you going to mention Rotary, Mr. Chairman, or would you like me to? No, you go ahead. <laughs> Uh, so my only new business is tomorrow night is the annual uh, Arlington Rotary Club's Paul Harris dinner. And our featured keynote speaker, for which uh, I know all attendees are waiting uh, with bated breath, is the chairman, Kevin Greeley, uh, to address Rotary tomorrow night. Uh, and also of note, uh, among some other award recipients, uh, Charlie Foskett will be honored uh, by Rotary for his uh, service to the community. And I learned today that I'll be introducing him. So it'll be a nice night for Arlington with the chairman addressing the crowd and also uh, Charlie Foskett being honored. I was thinking of starting drinking around 2, 2.30. <laughs> you know, Ice tea. Ice why, tea. why wait? <laughs> and, and actually, this is true now. Oh. A study was done that for those who are nervous <laughs> about public speaking, to have one drink of alcohol before a speech just one. is actually more, just one, there's the emphasis, <laughs> right? It's more helpful than taking a drug like Xanax or something. So, just so you know, but I won't do that. I was just wondering, Mr. Chairman, through, through you, and, and who will be installed tomorrow night as the uh, president, president of the Rotary Club oh, yeah, of yeah, Arlington? Yeah, yeah. That, that would be me also tomorrow night. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, well, it 
Should whoa, whoa, whoa. I was announced as keynote speaker. Where the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess. Now you know why I'm there as keynote speaker, because of Adam, I'm sure. Steve, new business, buddy? Um, just that I had a great time at the Greek Fest um, this weekend as a... Uh, Appleton Street resident, we um, walked down there several times and um, ate and listened to some music and it, it was a real blast. And um, I feel like it's been a while since our last meeting, so I can't really think about what else has <laughs> gone on since then, but that's it for me. Were they parking all the way up to your house? For the they festival? certainly were, but uh, thankfully I walked. Yeah, well, now I know because yeah. you're that close. Sure. Sure. I walked to my house too. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, yeah, much easier. <laughs> Miss Mahan. Uh, two things, I'll start off with light and then do heavy. Um, this Saturday is the first car wash for the Arlington High School Varsity Cheerleaders. Um, it's really one of their <clears throat> main fundraisers, and I do want to say every Saturday from now on, there'll be an Arlington High sports team out there, lacrosse, crew, uh, football. So um, any Saturday. Um, and some people. What time? Starts at 9 o'clock. And some go till 2. We go till 2. Some go till 3. But, you know. Um, depending on, you know, the end time is um, in terms of the different um, groups and clubs. So anybody in Arlington, if you want to donate money, I know there's probably about 12, 15 people that we have that won't let us wash their cars, but they give us the money. They usually have really nice cars when they come there's down. There's a lot and of pollen on the cars. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah. But um, if anybody wants to contribute any Saturday to any of the high school sports groups, you're going to find them there every single Saturday um, until uh, the end of the summer. And then um, the second point, and I, I did have a, a brief conversation with the town manager, and I guess I would sort of turn it over to, to him to, for some brief um, remarks. First, I wanted to commend the Arlington Police Department, um, mm. and in light of the recent shooting that we had, um, and I happened to be in the neighborhood. Uh, I stayed away from the scene because I know people, the professionals were there and, and were doing what they were supposed to do. Um, but I was really impressed with, um, from the chief on down, in terms of um, how rapidly and appropriately um, our officers responded to the situation. And I did call Officer Hogan today because I did read a canine officer was uh, the officer uh, that found uh, the alleged uh, gun used in the assault, and it was our own Dusty that um, picked up the hit on that, and I was very proud. And the other thing, um, before I pose the s sort of more serious question to um, the town manager, I know, and I believe the chief relate to all of us, but I, I've heard from so many of the officers and personnel down there on site, they were really truly impressed that you came out 11 o'clock, 12 midnight, and you were down there on the scene, um, and played a, an appropriate role, but was out there, I mean, I, really does great things for morale. Um, and, and again, I commend you and, and your wife and family for, it's not required that you live in Arlington, but I think it's really just another statement of commitment that you do do that, and that's one of the times that we do benefit from it. But um, it, I heard from so many officers that they just were like, wow, the town, you know, the town manager came. But um, to the serious point of that, um, I have heard from some residents down there. We did this about 20, 25 years ago when we had uh, three sexual assaults on women down in that area, and it sort of stemmed from the same activity. One of the things we did was we got the t Don Marquis and myself and others and the then board got the, t uh, the state to put up a light. But one of the other things, and I'd like to ask the manager if he feels comfortable speaking to it, is that we did go down to the, um, basically, people who were congregating down there, and it was really growing into a very large site, including um, perhaps other people coming in that somehow, you know, that gave them an advantageous position. So what we did was went down, spoke with them, but I, I, I'm not, I know I'm not doing it artfully, but a lot of people have said to me they're aware of that area and the alleged activity. Do you have any plans? I, I, I do, and thank you for your, your prior comments and thank you for the prompt. Um, so uh, Chief Ryan actually uh, reached out to me today and he's cooperating with Health and Human Services. And I actually learned uh, even subsequently that they're cooperating with the city of Cambridge on going down uh, with our police social worker, Rebecca Wolf, also some resources from Health and Human Services uh, to reach out to the homeless uh, people that are congregating in that area. Uh, let them know that uh, we are going to be removing their items that are, have been collected there. Uh, give them uh, a number of days notice uh, and then arrange for DPW to come down and remove the items. But in the meantime, try to provide them with referrals to resources uh, for either homeless shelters, housing, treatment, whatever it might be that they need. 
Uh, and we did learn that there, there are uh, some folks in Arlington, but also maybe even more across the border in Cambridge. So it seems to be a little bit of a border, On the L, what, yes. you know, a border problem. So we are, uh, again, going to cooperate with Cambridge. And we're, we're, we're trying to take a, you know, a humanized approach to this and understand that no one wants to be living there mm -hmm. uh, and that there's something that's happened in their life that's, that's led to the, uh, them being there. But also understanding that for a general feeling of public safety, uh, it's not an appropriate area for, uh, for them to be themselves and storing their belongings. And, and just one other comment that I heard from the residents down in that area, and I don't know if it's appropriate that we could do with this, but uh, four or five different gentlemen had said to me, besides you know, giving them 10, 20 day notice, whatever, and DPW goes in, is there anything we can do to the vegetation in terms of trimming it back? And or some couple gentlemen said maybe putting down some mulch. Basically what they were trying to say was, you know, in terms of when you have to walk through there, if it's not as conducive that it's an area that you have to be concerned about because it's not totally visible. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying we can do that, but it, uh, quite a, three or four gentlemen mentioned it to me today. I think MassDOT owns that property, okay. so we could ask them about that. Well, if you think it's appropriate, see what the chief and everybody yeah, else says. They were just saying, you know, make it so that everybody has a, a visual cue. And, you know, mm. sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mr. Caro. No new business. Mr. Dunn. Nothing. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, that, what Diane just talked about, is also what I was going to bring up. But uh, no, that's thank you. Uh, and to those of you that might commit crime in this town, I hope you're noticing what an excellent job Adam, Fred Ryan's department uh, does in terms of the apprehension. Both of those, well, the two victims, of course, handled by our uh, excellent first responders and the uh, two suspects are in custody, uh, and, and shortly thereafter, as has, has been the case in other unfortunate incidents in this town. So uh, we can be very, very proud of that police department, the fire department, and Adam's leadership both. Uh, motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Mr. Greeley? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I forgot one thing under new business. Yeah, that's tough. okay. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Steve, go ahead. Uh, I think it's important that we uh, congratulate Arlington High and Arlington Catholic seniors who both oh. graduated since our last meeting. Um, they had a graduation on Saturday, and I know um, there's been quite a few graduation parties, and I um, just think that they deserve the recognition at, uh, at here tonight. Thank you. Um, my son graduated from Matinon, and the big thing of all of the senior parties is these bounce houses, mm -hmm. what I used to take my three and four year old son and daughter to. Yeah. I'm t but the kids, the seniors, love it. I'm Have waiting you? for my invitation to on the, <laughs> <laughs> on the 21st of June. Mr. <laughs> Grilly. <laughs> and the girls that were in there. All right, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Next meeting of the Board of Selectmen, June 29th. Good night, Arlington. <laughs>